Okay, getting started, dude. What's it like to play The Hobbit for PC? What's it like? Someone please tell me. It feels smooth after playing Mario 64. I don't know why. Well, I guess, wait, Mario does uh, does run at 30 FPS, doesn't it? Er, the emulator says 60, but can we trust that? Can we, can we really trust that? I actually think that this game runs at 30 too, doesn't it? I might be wrong, but I think it's 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 frame capped at 30. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it certainly feels like you have more freedom of movement, which is funny because I I typically uh, I typically talk about how one of 64's advantages is its freedom of movement, and I do have to keep checking and make sure that uh, the timer properly resets. I'm pretty sure it's just because I'm going too fast on the main menu. Woo, that shouldn't matter. O other than obviously being slow. Alright. Um, enough about Bilbo. What the fuck else do I have to talk about, though? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> I said there were so many things I have to talk about, and then I I get to Bilbo, the game where I'm actually supposed to talk about things, and I I kind of run a blank. That's, that's what always happens, though, man. Like, I... I've got so many things that I think about off stream, and then as soon as stream starts, I'm just like, ah, what is there? There's nothing to talk about anymore. I, um, no, there's something. Fucking <laughs> Nitra, who, uh, popped in yesterday. There's a guy in my Discord. He, uh, <laughs> he recommended that, like, Look, it's nice, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a nice thing to recommend, but, like, he made his intentions so fucking clear that it was, like, I don't know. It's charming, but also really funny. He was, like, lightly pushing me towards uh, setting up a Patreon or or uh, just, like, linking my PayPal. He was like, you should really, you should really link your PayPal. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I was like, okay, I get it. But, uh, no, I don't know. I don't really feel... I, I said it to him. I don't feel comfortable, like, taking direct donations for, for reasons. Especially on Twitch, because, as I've mentioned in the past, I, I still use Streamlabs. So, like, if I wanted to take donations, I'd have to, like, switch everything I have over to, like, stream elements or something. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. Donations are weird to me because there's literally nothing stopping someone from, like, spending too much, you know? Like, I never want someone to decide how much money they give me. I even feel uncomfortable with, like, Tier 3 subs. Like, the one time I got a Tier 3 sub from someone I know, I was like, you, you shouldn't do that. Like, that just... <laughs> that's too much money to spend on me out of nowhere. Like, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable about it. So the fact that someone, even if it's just like a one-time donation, like I, I don't know why it feels more comfortable to me for, for someone to like, you know, subscribe to me on Twitch and leave multiple $5 donations over the course of like years. That seems fine to me. I've got no problem with it. But the fact that someone could just dump like 100 on me all at once, I'm like, I don't. I don't like that. I don't want someone to be able to do that. Especially because, like, with streaming and everything, there's, like, the whole... There's, like, a weird culture around it and, like, ooh, I want the streamer to say my name and, like, ah, I donated, like, a thousand dollars just because they freaked out over it and that makes me happy. Uh, not including things like chargebacks, obviously, but, like, people will spend more money than they have and should spend. Um just for, you know, fucking parasocial relationships. Like, come on, dude. You're better than that. This is kind of... I don't want to, like... I don't want to alarm anybody, but this is kind of slick so far. Kind of slick. Which means I can't read chat. Sorry, Rift. You know, I appreciate that you've stuck around for so long. Most of the time, as soon as I bring up how gaslighting is funny, people are out of here. Oh, fuck. That's not the end of the level. I pressed escape. <laughs> what the fuck am I? Who am I? Pressing escape at a time like that. I have, I've never uh, been this cracked before. I think the Mario 64 runs actually helped, you know? They, they greased me up a little. 
I'm a, I'm a well-oiled machine. Look at him go. I still never long jump there just because it seems fucking terrifying. I'm sure if I just got used to it, it would be whatever, but it seems scary to long jump immediately after that. So I don't. Sue me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing well without it. So if I don't need a long jump there... <laughs> the second... Wait, what the fuck? What rock even hit that? I... I'm confused by that. <laughs> I, I didn't think that a rock was anywhere near hitting that. Um, what I was gonna say, I thought I had more time to talk about it there, was if I ever start doing the, the long jump, uh, to the left of that pillar that falls down, you know I've, like, like, I've truly lost it. There is no saving me at that point. Like, I'm still naive and that I'll, like, stop running the Hobbit at some point, but if I, if I start doing the, the long jump to the left of the pillar, I'm, like, way too committed. That's, that's seek help territory. Like, there's already plenty of, uh, reset moments in this run to, to just make one of your own to save like three seconds that's that's a bit far for me okay I fucked this up miserably and like moved my camera too early for some reason it should still be possible yeah but that was really bad really bad that's fine at least the clip was quick sometimes sometimes you'll uh even if you get really fast, uh, like, clip into the pillar, the actual clip through the wall doesn't end up playing out too nicely. Fuck, dude! Alright, speaking of, uh, plenty of points to reset already, I'm so, like, ugh! I just want to prove to myself that it's possible to get to the stairs. Like, I think if I'm cracked enough, I can get to the stairs, but it's not worth it at all. Especially not when you can just fucking bounce off of any random corner in this game. Was he fucking T-posing? Uh, kind of. <laughs> kind of T-posing. Yeah, no, I guess that's true. I guess that's why I feel more comfortable with, like, a $5 subscription. It's because I know they're not immediately, like, putting themselves under. Whereas if they, if they donate 100 all at once, it's like, you have no idea what their financial situation is like. Not that I expect Nitra and my Discord to be irresponsible with money, but I just don't want to, like, open the floodgates for anybody. I just, uh, I don't know. Don't, I don't like the idea of it. Like, uh, I've got the, the option to support me on my game. It's five dollars. And I've got the option to support me on my stream, which is five to twenty-five dollars. Depending on where you live, I guess. The, the currencies do differ. U.S. dollars, that is. I should be more clear. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I did think about it prior to releasing Bounty Below. In fact, like, literally, I think my PayPal, it's, like, stuck like this forever. Uh, when you set up, like, a, a fucking PayPal donation page, there's, like, a few ways you can do it. But if you set up, like, an actual donation page through PayPal, um, you have to pick a name for it, and I don't think I can change that name. So I do literally, tied to my PayPal account, still have a page that's not in use and you can't access it, but I have it set up so that, uh, the page is, like, bountybelow.paypal.whatever, um, I did plan on it originally, but then I looked into it more, and uh, this is actually, I think I talked about this briefly when talking about, uh, <laughs> like, people's fucking arrogance and snootiness uh, regarding giving people help, but, uh, yeah, I, I looked at, like, the Steam forums and was like, hey, is it, like, okay if in my game I, like, even make a presence known that I have, like, a PayPal or Patreon or something? And the answer is no. Steam Steam is not okay with that. Uh, which is kind of shitty, but also understandable, right? Like, 
Valve doesn't want you on their platform to redirect to another platform where you can make money. I get it. Um, but it is kind of scummy. Anyways, you know, I'm not like a Steam shill or anything. I've got plenty of things to complain about when it comes to Valve, uh, despite technically being a Valve partner. It's, it's, you know, even if I was a Twitch partner. I mean, I'm an affiliate, right? And I still shit on Twitch all the fucking time. Um, but, uh, yeah, fucking, I don't know. I, I don't know why I even wanted to, to begin with. Because, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've always felt uncomfortable about the idea of people potentially, like, dropping way too much money. But, like, I went... <laughs> I don't know, maybe I did just have a different mind about it back then, because instead of doing Patreon, which I think you can set better limits on how much people spend uh, versus the, like, direct PayPal link thing. I, uh, I went with the PayPal, so maybe I did think differently. I, I was probably in, like, a really negative mindset at that time and was like, ah, oh, fuck, if I don't make money off of this game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be homeless. Which, yeah, you know, I still have that feeling every now and then even though the game's already out, and I haven't made money off of it. But, <laughs> I don't know. I'll just, like, get a real job is the answer. It's like, you don't want to, but you have to. And I have, like, twice already. But I naively thought I could, I could skirt away from it, maybe just for a little bit longer. You know, dodge that responsibility. Responsibilities are hard. What a... What a fucking cracked player, though. Like, I, I'm feeling it today. I'm getting to uh, to Overhill very frequently. Good feeling. Over the many, many days that I've been stuck in, uh, in Dreamworld. Slight consistency. Who would have thought? If you do something slightly more often and don't wait two weeks in between every practice session, you're, uh, you're bound to, to improve. I was impatient with that second one there. Because I've, I've been kind of nailing these. Case in point. Now that I've, like, fixed my setup slightly, I feel much more confident in that. I did it on the... <sighs> menuing. I did it on the uh, the first run that went to Overhill, or got past Roll Hole, I guess. Um, I saw Moose do some runs, and um, he was doing all long jumps there, because I guess you can do all long jumps there. But I don't know. I feel like you have to take like such a roundabout path to do exclusively long jumps there that I don't actually know if it saves any time. You know, I'm sure that he's done the research and probably knows better than I do, but I, um, well, fucked this one up pretty, pretty fiercely, but we still landed it. This is, this is scuffed all around, but still definitely capable of, uh, capable of a PB. Like, I, I still have two minutes or so to save on the final split, so I'm not sweating any of these, like, pretty minor time losses. Yeah, I don't know. It, uh... It seems not as good to do all long jumps, but I might be set insane. By followers, primes, and viewers? What an opportunity. All in the same place, you say? All I have to do is click a definitely not malware link? For, for anyone in chat, by the way, just, like, chill. Just, like, chill, alright? Just be chill. Don't click on that link. <laughs> Look, I don't have any mods. Well, I do have some mods, but they never show up. So, I don't have any mods. Just uh, just don't click it for a while, and, and I'll handle it. I'm responsible. I know what I'm doing. If Rift's still around, I might fucking mod him. Just, just, for, just for a flex mod, you know? Just to try it out, see, see if he's... If he's got what it takes. I know moderation in a chat with uh, very inactive chatters is, is quite a difficult task. But if he thinks he's up for it, I might consider it. I might allow him to moderate. To, to have the honor of moderating such a prestigious chat as my own. 
All right, I'm gonna take it slightly slower. I even, I even uh, didn't even bother with the second one there. I chilled on the first platform like some sort of fucking <laughs> sub, not sub, sub, sub. No, that's just more below. Super? Super 20? <laughs> that sounds so bad, but like, I think that super is the right term to use instead of sub, if you're talking about over versus under. Alright, look, you can't blame me for, uh, for fucking up bean jump when I had a fucking spam bot to ban. Hello? Auto, auto complete? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll uh, I'll t I'll take your your offer on the inactive mod. Let's see, mod. There you go. You have all the power in the world to uh, to ban whoever you please. We got a we got a rogue mod alert. Rogue mod. He's he's out of control. No one can stop him. But, um, yeah, no, this has been going, like, honestly, really, really well. I have nothing to complain about. Fucking scratch it. Fuck that. These runs are awful. You see that scuffed long jump? Fucking, I can't do anything in this world. I'm pretty sure, like, those, that double long jump set is bad, too. <laughs> like, speaking about Moose taking the, the long jumps past Troll Hole, I'm pretty sure that doing two long jumps here is also suboptimal. It, like, feels good because, like, I don't know, you think that the more long jumps, the better. But I'm pretty sure that, uh, that it's just simply worse. It's simply worse. But I've, I've been getting to overhill consistently, so I do not care how many times I reset on Dream World here. I'm like floating on a Mario 64 high right now. Nothing can bring this down. I saw that, uh, you know, well, I guess since I mentioned Moose, I should probably mention it in reference to Moose first. But, uh, Critical. Char what, what do people call him? Fucking Critical or Charlie? I see Charlie thrown around a lot, but that might be too familiar. I don't know. Like, I. I you know, I try to address Ryan as Northern Lion while I'm live because it does feel weird to use his first name. But, like, when I'm talking to my girlfriend, I usually just say Ryan. Because, I don't know. There aren't... I mean, there's probably plenty of streamers whose name are Ryan, but... Not that I watch. And definitely not that are... That are, uh, usually called Ryan. Like, I feel like Ryan is called Ryan more than he's called Northern Lion. And definitely more than he's called Northern. But, um... Yeah, I have no fucking clue what people call Critical, because I don't watch him. Anyways, uh, he raided Moose, and Moose is kind of fucking soaring. Like, I, I checked his numbers today, too, just to make sure it hadn't, like, completely dropped. Because, like, look, I talk about how you make it in streaming constantly, and how it's, like, not possible and no one should try. But, I've never once mentioned raids. What's up with that? Uh, the reason is from, like, you know, obvi obviously anecdotal experience, but everything I've heard about people who have gotten, like, a big raid at any point in their Twitch career, I've never heard success come from that. It's always just been like, yeah, you get, like, a big spike, obviously, with the raid, but um, people don't usually stay, and it definitely has to do with the community of, like, who's raiding you. So I'm not gonna say, like, all big raids are created equally. Maybe, maybe Charlie Critical has a, has a very open-minded and welcome community to, to experience new streamers they've never seen before. But in general, like, I mean, for one, most people don't even stay with a raid. Like, most people leave immediately after a raid happens. Um, but beyond that, even the people who, like, follow the stream and, like, you know, set an expectation that they might watch, uh, I've heard that it, it doesn't always actually, uh, you know, stay as consistent as you might like. But this is, a, this is a good case study because it's never actually happened to someone that I knew. And also, 
elephant in the room, okay? I'll say it. Anyone who refuses to say it is, you know, well, not lying, but like, you know, withholding a truth that exists. It's a little... It's on the verge of what some might consider frustrating to have, like, I don't know how many people were streaming The Hobbit at the same time Moose was. Probably not many, because it's not a very active category. But, like, for, for Critical to out of nowhere, um, I think because he saw... Though, I think he also watched it on his stream, like, today. Because he saw M. Karma's documentary, uh, decided to raid someone in the Hobbit category. Like, damn, dude. That shot does not come around super often. And, you know, Moose owns. Like, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it or anything. But it's still upsetting to have an opportunity like that whiz past your ear. But, you know, I, I, I don't want it to sound like, oh, oh, I can't be happy for the guy who's getting sudden success. Like, it's sick. Don't get me wrong. And I don't even feel like I need to defend myself, because if anything I said upset Moose, he would just be like, I don't care. I'm fucking owning. Like, I, I, I've got the numbers now. Like, it doesn't matter what you say. I'm cruising. Uh, at least that's the attitude I would take if anyone was like, yeah, but it could have been me. Because, like, I think everyone feels it, right? More so when it's, like, a situation where it really, really could have been you. Like, look, it's... You're, like, self-pitying yourself if, like, every single big raid you watch, like, a big streamer do is a it-could-have-been-me situation. But, like, to, to literally have it be the category I just started streaming in. And, uh, you know, there was no chance I was going to stream on that night. So it's not like, uh, oh, I was definitely planning on streaming that night, but, oh, I stubbed my toe and that made it impossible for me to stream. But if I didn't stub my toe, then I, that could have been me. It wasn't that bad. But it, uh, still, still just being that close is, uh, you know, it's, it's enough to make you think. It's enough to make you be like, damn it, dude. Alright, I guess it'll be another few years of, uh, of streaming to the audience I have. I'm trying not to say zero viewers. Like, I'm really trying to cut away from it now that I... At least the past two streams, like I said, I, I don't, uh... I don't have view count. Maybe I should have view count if I'm gonna constantly be talking about having zero viewers. I need to be, like, put in my place. Let's check it out. Yeah, fucking... I'm a fucking idiot, basically. Like, I could- I- I'm streaming to four people. I don't fucking care. I'm gonna say zero viewers for the rest of my life. I guess I'm gonna be streaming to a hundred people and still act like, Oh, I'm the little guy with zero viewers. I should try and cut that attitude slightly. It's, uh... I guess it's not the best look. If you actually are gaining an audience to- to constantly be like, Woe is me, the streamer streaming to zero viewers. Um... Sure, fine. My bad. I don't even remember what I was saying because I got sidetracked by that. But, oh yeah, no, I was gonna say, woe is me. <laughs> it was uh, something along the lines of, woe is me, if I remember. Uh, another few years of, of uh, my current audience. That's fine. I can, I can save my current audience. And, like, honestly, like, it's been like, very inspiring to, to keep streaming, knowing that people actually are watching me now. It's like, look, I'm not gonna say, oh, I've always been this good at commentary. And I'm not even gonna say I am good at commentary, you know? You can make your own decisions on whether or not I suck ass or am funny. But, uh, it's been a long time of me putting the same amount of effort, regardless of whether or not I was good at it and uh, not getting literally anything to show for it. So the fact that, you know, I, I, I don't want to, like, it's hard to say, like, oh, this is me now, this is my life. Like, I'm, I'm actually starting to get people to view me, because then I, it's going to be, like, even more demoralizing if, like, I don't know, the next stream I do, I really am streaming to zero viewers again. It's just like Twitch is such a fucked mental headspace. There is no way to feel good about streaming. I'm I'm convinced. 
I'm convinced no matter what you do, your brain will literally always do mental gymnastics to make you feel bad about yourself. It's it's the hard truth that I have to swallow. Uh, at least for me, being someone who is like already kind of socially anxious. I uh I haven't found a way of <laughs> of uh properly feeling like I I don't know, it's weird to say this when I am like totally comfortable streaming to even zero viewers, but like it's hard for me to feel like I have any decision in what happens to my stream. Like that sounds bad, maybe, but it's kind of the truth of it. Like everything you do, no matter how much you put effort into your stream, doesn't matter when you're at zero viewers. I think that's the best way to put it. Like, there is a huge exponential gain to, to Twitch streaming especially, um, where the platform literally doesn't care about you at all, if you even have, like, a hundred viewers, honestly. Uh, Twitch, Twitch doesn't care. Though, if you do reach that hundred threshold, congratulations! At 100 viewers, Twitch considers you a small streamer! Isn't that funny? Um, cause that's, that's when they start putting you in those, uh, smaller streamers you might consider watching category on the front page. That's not totally fair. I've seen some people in there with, like, 20-something viewers. But, like, still, 20-something viewers compared to the rest of people streaming on Twitch is so above the norm. So, Twitch, Twitch literally doesn't do anything for you, um... And, like, even just, like, for people browsing, like, a specific category, right? Like, I could play Minecraft, and I'm using Minecraft for a reason. I could play Minecraft and be the most entertaining streamer of all time. But if I'm at zero viewers to start out with, it won't matter at all. Like, okay. Uh, awkward. <laughs> I, that clip felt good to me. But, uh, yeah, it won't matter at all, because no one is going to find you. Literally nobody, well, unless they're doing it as, like, a sick fucking joke. No one is going to the bottom of the Minecraft category to find someone with zero viewers and give them a chance. Uh, like, you have slightly increased odds if you do, like, every single thing possible to, to, to get noticed, and by that I mean, like, you know, you can do TikTok, upload clips to TikTok, you can do YouTube. These are all platforms that have slightly better recognition, and more importantly, well, maybe not so much TikTok, but YouTube, at least, has some permanence in its recognition. Woo! Don't do that, Bilbo. The reason I don't include TikTok there is because, like, despite, yes, TikToks literally having... Uh, like, they're, they're not on a limited time, that they, they stay on the platform until you delete them. Uh, they effectively have a limited time, because after, like, the first camera? After the first hour or few hours of a TikTok existing, unless it, like, soars into the millions, it might always get some views, uh, maybe. But it seems like TikTok puts you out of the, uh, the relevance queue pretty quickly. So... YouTube is probably the best for, like, uh, permanence in, like, what you're doing. And, like, anybody who does Twitch should be doing things like, well, YouTube at the very least. Uh, I'm not gonna say anyone doing Twitch should do TikTok, though it certainly probably helps you. Um, at the very least, you should be doing YouTube, uh, because it's, you know, permanent. <laughs> Instead of Twitch, you're only going to be noticed while you're live. So, there is a constant urge or, like, feeling that you need to be live all the time. Which I've tried to break recently because, I mean, it's just a... It's just an unreasonable expectation to be live all the time. Have you heard of the Hover? Or, have you heard of Hover? It's basically TikTok for streamers. I have not heard of Hover, but here's what I'll say about that. Like, while- and don't get me wrong, especially, like, this is probably a good example to use. You could- like, if you have the energy and time to put yourself on literally every platform that exists, 
you should, because that is always going to be your best chance of being noticed, is making sure you're available on wherever people are. Uh, obviously, it stops to be, like, it stops being worth it at a point where you're, you know, putting things on a platform with, like, no users. And I'm not saying that that's Hover, because I've just never heard about it. Maybe it's huge. Um, but there's also something to be said about, like, giving new platforms a chance, too. Because if Hover isn't currently big and takes off, being the first of, like, any content creator to make content on Hover uh, will get you noticed. So you, you should go for opportunities like that, don't get me wrong. But um, I guess the point of what I'm saying is TikTok is already huge. So if you don't want to put the gamble on, like, you know, guessing if a particular service is going to be big or not. There's no shame in just like, wow, if I held forward there, I think I'd, I would have had that. There's no shame in just putting your content on, uh, on the already established platform that's still, like, good for recognition. Like, you, there's plenty of negative things to say about TikTok, don't get me wrong. I didn't think I was going to make that. But, uh... TikTok is very, very good at showing anybody your stuff. Like, it, it it doesn't always transfer well if you're, like, doing it for the case of pushing a Twitch channel. Like, for example, I have a TikTok that has, like, some hundred thousand views, and admittedly, it, it got that big because people negatively perceived it, because people will negatively perceive literally anything regarding someone being good at Fall Guys. Uh, just to give an outline of what the clip was. You can find it on my YouTube channel if you don't want to go to, uh, to TikTok, because I understand not wanting to use TikTok also. But, um... Yeah, anyways. It doesn't always translate to actual gain. Like, I still think it is the best to try and get noticed wherever possible if you're trying to do something like Twitch. But at the same time, like... Don't beat yourself up if you're getting good numbers on one platform and horrible numbers on another. Like, you want... And, like, look, I, I know I'm just going, like, super analytics mode and, and treating people enjoying your content as the numbers, but, like, this is what it is to you as a streamer. And I'm not saying, like, people are numbers. I just mean that, like, more so for a negative mental headspace... It feels bad making no progress at all for years. Like, I'm not saying it is a, I don't know, weird ego play. Um, quite the opposite. It's like a huge negative ego play when you do this for like as long as I have, as long as many people have, and get nothing from it. Um, like, I don't know. I feel like there's an expectation that if you just do it long enough, you'll make it. And like... That's probably true, but it can certainly be demoralizing seeing other people do, like, the exact same thing that you did. Like, I don't know, they, they upload to YouTube, they upload to TikTok, and just maybe they were playing the trends better, or, like, new people that could get them into to more popular spaces. Like, Among Us Lobbies is a huge example of, like, a lot of people that no one's ever heard of ha have, like, started huge careers out of that. Uh, a lot of people have also, as soon as they stopped playing Among Us, lost all of that audience, but... Anyways, that's that's a whole different discussion. Um, well, what am I talking about? I guess what I'm talking about is, uh... Yeah, you, you, you really do... It's in your best interest to put yourself... Um, and it, it's... Like, that's the, the... I think that's, like, the main point of why this is such a fucking toxic thing to do to yourself is, like, you're literally advertising yourself, and, uh, streaming is more or less like, hey, uh, do you think that, like, my character, do you think that myself as a person is worthy of doing this as a job? So, I, I feel like that's why it can feel especially bad when things don't work for as long as they don't work, is because, like, streaming really is just, like, uh, it's just you, dude. Like, I'm just a guy. I'm not doing anything special. Most people aren't doing any, doing uh, anything special on Twitch. They're just 
playing games or watching Gordon Ramsay and and that's it, right? Probably don't watch Gordon Ramsay unless you're uh, too big to fail, as they say. It's like the uh, that's the uh, that's the streamer secret, right? How do you get away with uh, with watching literal television shows without the license on your live stream? The answer is just be big enough that like you can make a big fuss on Twitter and uh, make Twitch feel bad for you know enacting the law on you. Don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of problems with <laughs> such scuffed movement. There are plenty of problems with uh, you know the laws surrounding DMCA in the first place. I'm certainly not a DMCA defender, but, you know, if you're not actively advocating against a change in the laws, which, I mean, admittedly, a lot of people are, but unless you're, like, an actual advocate and, and you stand behind something and aren't just, you know, abusing the DMCA system because... Well, I shouldn't say abusing, because that brings up, the, I think, the expectation that you're doing what people on YouTube do, where they... Uh, like, falsely claim things. What I mean is, if you're cheating the system and not doing things the way you're supposed to and you're just, like, watching Gordon Ramsay live on your stream, like, I get it, I guess. Uh, you're kind of, like, flaunting your privilege for already being established on Twitch. For, like, I feel bad for anybody who sees, like, popular streamers doing this kind of thing and think that that makes it okay. Because, like... Look, say whatever you want. Like I said, you know, you can be an advocate for whatever you believe in. I also think that the way the DMCA law currently works is kind of bad. Um, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is uh, if you are a smaller streamer, please do not look at people like flaunting the law and uh, think that that applies to you too. Because Twitch will not step up to defend you in the way it... Uh, defend some people at the top. Just just be careful. Be careful out there, is, is mainly what I want to say. Let's try and, like, improve my movement in this area literally at all. Like, I've been going through this dark corridor for so long with the most scuffed movement, and it was still scuffed there, don't get me wrong, but slightly less scuffed. Didn't get flung a mile away by that bat. That's a good feeling. We actually get to uh, to continue with the run here. I'm always so scared by uh, sword slashing uh, off of those platforms. Please. God damn it, dude! I put the inputs in and everything. I know you can't see my shift input, but you could see my jump input. I, I took too long to line myself up there. At least I got the, the second try pretty quickly. Alright, we got a real run. I don't know what's happened to me, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of cracked now? Doing doing Mario 64 made me a changed man. Gave me a feeling for what speedrun really is. The heart of a speedrunner. I'm, uh, I'm killing it. The consistency's been out of control. The, the... You know, general gameplay has been slick. I'm feeling it. Whoa, that was almost a bad enough uh, slash jump to, to send me over. Would have been extremely unfortunate. I see you said goodnight, Rift. I'll say uh, I'll say goodnight to you, even though I'm not going to read the rest of the message because I'm gaming. But uh, thanks for hanging out. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, there goes my only mod, so for anyone who wants to put ASCII dicks in chat, now's your chance. Now's your chance. Alright, flawless with the, uh, with the minecart section. How, how ahead am I? Not that much. Which is upsetting, because I thought I was doing really well here. <laughs> well, we'll see, I guess. We'll see at the end of the split. Although I, I really don't have that much time to, like, look at my timer in this run. I, I just kind of, like, hope that I'm doing well. Also, is YouTube doing that? Are we going to put in a moment of silence for our fallen soldiers? I think we are. Okay, whatever. You're just supposed to come around this way if you fail that. Which I never do. Either this song has, like, a really long hang time at the end of it, or this is a, this is a fallen 
a fallen soldier's moment. Uh, a, a real silent night. I think uh, I think YouTube is doing the thing where it says, "Are you still watching?" Which I mean, I'm not, but I was enjoying the tunes. <sighs> you know, all these companies finding finding the best way to ensure that their advertisements are being watched. Wait, that's not what you do there. You're supposed to do a long jump, scuffed movement, scuffed runner, Papa John's. Nice. I actually am, like, slightly getting more consistent at that. I always forget what I'm supposed to do here, though. We're getting there. I feel like all of the, like, look, okay, I make fun of streamers for, like, taking advantage of DMCA and just playing whatever music they want on their stream, but now that I've got no music, it is like, damn, dude. A streamer without music. I actually have to be entertaining for once. I don't know if I can do it. Okay, just keep jumping. Keep jumping and you can save this. That felt wrong, though. Like, I could I could almost guarantee that I wasn't going to land that. I don't know why it felt... Oh, fuck. I was... I was schmoving so hard that my... <laughs> my clip warp position is back there. Okay, well, that's fine. Falling out of bounds isn't the end of the world. This is an easy time save for the future. Think about it that way. I, um, I've never fucked up this section too bad on a run. I fuck up this jump a little bit, usually like that, where I'm so fucking terrified that I'm gonna go too far. But, I, uh, you know, it's not that bad. That's like an okay section to fuck up on. If you're gonna fuck up on any section, do it, do it there. That's a good one, I found. There's probably, like, plenty of long jumps I could fit in here. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Fuck, dude. I, I got it. I was just angled too, too far to the, to the left. All right, I see a big message from Riff that I definitely can't fit into this 10-second timeout. I'll check that out later. I'm sure it's got plenty of uh, juicy commentary topics to pick apart, even though he's already gone. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll use your message wisely and responsibly. It's like around there. K yeah, kind of. It did work after he got up. Alright. Dude, why, why, like, during the only good run of the night does the music <laughs> decide to stop playing? That was way too far to the right there. Nice, nice. Clean with it. Oh, come on, Bilbo. You know better than that. Jump when I tell you to. Oh, God. I kind of almost uh, slid off the wrong side of that invisible wall. Alright, we're doing it, though. No matter what happens at this point, I, I hate to look at my splits right now. Because I fear that they would stress me out farther. I'm already kind of feeling it on this run. It's it's not often I make it this far. Usually the the limits of my abilities are at overhill. So to 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 get this far it really means something to me. Fuck. <laughs> you can tell I don't get here far or, or I don't get here regularly because I I just do not know what to do. Okay. I'm like probably too uh, too reckless when it comes to my little tappies forward there, because I'm always first throw, which is technically good. That's what you want to be. You want to get in the water on first throw, but it's kind of scary, because that means I was right at the edge. Hey! That's actually sick. Sorry, I should... I, what a bad streamer. I should read chat messages out loud. At least one of the early adopters in my extended circle went partner because of Hover. Yeah. Um, well, that's sick for them. That owns for them. Am I moving? I'm still moving. I stopped moving. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, do do whatever works, I guess, is the, the end takeaway. 
It's uh, it's not a very good end takeaway because like, look, let's let's rephrase it. Do whatever works is the fucking least helpful advice. I'm sorry. Uh, I should rephrase that to do literally everything because everything tends to work better than nothing. Though also, I should say, don't get too invested, because, like, you can spend a lifetime working on, on uh, Twitch and get nowhere, and nobody wants that morale hit in their life. Most people on Twitch are, <laughs> myself included, usually at the borderline of just, like, fucking hoping for all God that this works out, because, uh, I mean, you know, who wants a real job, right? So if uh, if you're already on the edge of of being set off, god damn it, dude! I'm trying to get Bilbo's hair to to disappear. I don't even know what I was trying to say because I got distracted by the clip. Uh, yeah, just do whatever works. <laughs> uh, I genuinely didn't mean to be that funny. I'm sorry. I have to own up to it though. <laughs> my intention was to say my intended good advice again, but I just said the bad advice again. Oh my god. Cheeseburger. Well, that works, actually. I did not think I stood there for two seconds. I thought I was gonna have to clip again. That's nice. Alright, here. Here. For all of the things to fuck up, I guess I'm happier I'm fucking up the, uh, yeah, I'm happier I'm fucking up that part of it, because that's the easy part. So if I have to practice the easy part, I don't, I don't give a shit. That's, that's like, uh, 30 minutes to perfect it, probably. But, um, I still don't really understand how to do that consistently if you don't get the quick clip. To, uh, to be as consistent as I am with, uh, inside info, and, uh, he clipped me there. God damn it, dude. To be as consistent as I am with the long jump feels pretty good. I can still PB. I know it might not seem like it, but uh, it's true. I, I can still PB despite how fucking, how much my movement has fallen apart here. Nice, somewhat quick clip. We take those. I could tell, I could tell my slash jumps were scuffed last time. Jesus Christ, the spiders are so aggressive sometimes! Fuck, I fucked up the long jump window. Yeah, I don't know. The, uh, the spiders are pretty RNG. Like, I'm, I'm sure that even with that movement, as clean as it was, if the spiders were, uh, were angry enough, they could have still gotten me. Alright, and here we are. Dude, I feel so, like, not nervous, though, for, like, a number of reasons. One, because I, like, fucked up the, the inside info clip, like, four times, so I feel a little bit less like this is the god run now. That was bad, so I'm not gonna put myself in a 10 second timeout. That was also bad. I got scared that I was gonna get sniped. There you go. If you can avoid putting yourself in 10 second timeout, that's that's the goal. Those are <laughs> goals, goals, a uh, I on Ryan, here you go. I called him Ryan. On Ryan's recommendation, I uh, I checked out a Twitter account called uh and I know that was slow. Oh, fucking I just walked off, so now my clip warp uh position is going to be fucked anyways. Per Ryan's recommendation, I checked out a uh, Twitter account by the name of Mobile Game Hell. I would I huge recommend. I went through their entire back catalog. That's how much fun I had with it. It's very rare that a that a Twitter account like that will encapsulate me so much. But goddamn, like I fucking love shitty mobile ads. Like as much as I hate ads, and I think they're like an actual bane. Uh, or like uh, what's, what's bane isn't the right word. They're an actual blemish on society and should be done away with. Um, I'm, I can't believe I am here, by the way, going to PB. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm kind of losing it at this run here. What am I saying? Uh, yeah, mobile game hell. Good. Uh, despite hating advertisements as much as I do and as much as everyone should, um, mobile game ads are just, like, funny. Like, it's, it's, it's a special kind of humor where I don't
don't know how to describe, like, what you feel when you watch bad mobile game ads. I'm sure everyone knows exactly what I'm talking about, but, like, it's, it's kind of hard to put into words, like, that, that kind of humor and the fact that it is funny. It is funny! Trust me, it's funny! I swear, if you check out this Twitter account, you'll laugh. But, yeah. Goals AF. There was one that used, like, a, a Nightcore version of a bad song. I have stuck in my head now because of it, because I fucking <laughs> laughed hysterically at it for probably too long. But, hey, PB, by the way. Can you believe it? This guy? Uh, multi <laughs> multiple PBs in Mario? And, uh, even, even spreading the love to Hobbit. Even spreading the love to Hobbit. God, it really did feel awkward in that latter half. Um, not having any music. Hey, gold! Uh, I fixed it so my golds are actually rainbow, because I realized that, uh... Look, don't get me wrong. It's a hard choice to make, right? I could keep the green timer, because it's the color of timer that basically everyone uses. You basically only see green or blue. But, like, without a an actual solid, like, gray background. And I could just use the live split background, though I think it looks slightly better chroma keyed the way I have it. It's scuffed no matter what way you look at it. But, um... I, I, I see the complaints. I see the issue with the fact that I'm running a red timer. I, I think the only thing that needed to be changed was gold, though. Because, like, you can tell I'm green just by the fact that the split has a negative Your sign in front of it. It doesn't matter what color it is, right? Um, and you can tell I'm behind if it has a plus symbol in front of it. The only thing that was, like, kind of ambiguous was gold. Uh, so I made it rainbow. And there you go. That's the end of that story. Am I going to do another one? Goals. Actual goals AF. Give me a second, I'm fixing the music. <laughs> oh, thank you for the follow while I fix the music. This is the most entertaining content I've done in a while. <laughs> can I can I skip to the part of the song that's that's goals AF? I don't know where it is. Oh, he's found it. Oh, slightly early. It's so bad. Oh, fuck it. Whatever. It's not even... It's it's not even... It's not even... Goals, goals AF. There, I swear. I swear on my life there is a part of the song where they, they legitimately say goals AF. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for enjoying the run. One of many. Too many. Too many to think about. But the commentary, that's where that's where I really stroke my ego. That's where I really pretend like uh like I'm <laughs> worth anything on this platform. Alright, should I should I stop saving on inside info? I'm kinda slick with it. Like look, I can <laughs> somehow convince myself that it's worth saving three seconds on a- Oh, sorry, let me get off the main menu. I have to reset the timer. Just press the th No, I can't press the three button. I'm glad I stopped myself, or it would have reset my other timer, too. Not that my other timer has literally any meaning anymore, because it's not even up time. Because I was using that for Mario 64. Goals. Literally, goals AF. Hello? I just want my keyboard controls to work. Hello? Thank you. Um, what was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's how I trick myself into thinking I'm a good streamer, is uh, the fact that I won't shut up. Despite, like, most of what I'm talking about not actually being worth a shit. It's, uh, you know. I still, I still, <laughs> I pride myself in my ability to keep talking, even though I know there's people who do it better than me. 
Like, I, I shouldn't hold myself up to Ryan's standards, or the standards I have for Ryan, I guess is a better way to phrase that. But at the same time, uh, it's probably good to have, like, a role model that you truly think is, like, good at streaming. Like, I don't- sorry, I'm gonna throw someone under the bus, but I don't really care because they're at the fucking top of Twitch and, uh, will literally never hear this, but... I don't know what you do if your fucking role model for streaming is someone like XQC. Like, I t how do you, how do you fucking, it's, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to throw him under the bus too much, but like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know if there's too much to be learned from that. I guess the answer is just be extremely lucky and then like you can do no wrong. That's, that's the lesson to be learned from someone like XQC. But, dude, I, <laughs> XQC is such a fucking like, it's a it's a good radar for like where where someone is on Twitch. Like when I was still working at GameStop, one of my employees who I wasn't like really friends with. I, uh, this sounds really bad too, because I was friends with basically everyone at that GameStop except this guy. Um, but there's a good reason. <laughs> Can you believe it? Can you believe? Uh, after talking about Twitch.tv, he said his favorite streamer was XQC. That's how you know. That's how you know that, that the, the friendship isn't going to kick off anytime soon. That's okay. He was like a couple years younger than me, so he still has time to learn from his mistakes. I'm really fucking throwing XQC under though, huh? I've like genuinely never watched him, so I'm just like picking apart at like the few clips I've seen of his which don't necessarily reflect uh, positively, but I probably, it's, you know, it's irresponsible to, to use that as my critique of their entire character from, like, literally the most negative, taken out of context moments in their live streaming career. But at the same time, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to is basically where I land on that. Everything I've seen has been pretty negative, so I, I don't see too much reason to uh, to pop into that stream anytime soon. Plus, I'm like taken, dude. It's like a that's like the the little talked about. Well, actually, maybe it's not when you talk about it in terms of saturation, right? Like I think like streamer saturation is talked about pretty frequently, but like I think the other side of saturation that's understated slightly is the fact that, like, yeah, Twitch is, like, an incredibly saturated website where there is very little to go around. I'm still surprised that, like, I see new streamers every day that I've never fucking heard of with, like, thousands of viewers, don't get me wrong. And, like, there there is room for communities, especially in other languages, but, like, for, for an English-speaking community trying to get off the ground, uh, you've got a lot of competition. I also think that English speaking is also where the most viewership is, so that's that's slightly helpful. But the biggest thing is on the other coin of saturation, I think it's uh, it's understated how little of an appetite people have for streamers. Like, I don't know about everyone else, but I only watch like one or two streamers ever, ever. Like, there is not much room for, for my time, basically. I fucking talk to Gandalf. I talked to Gandalf. We're resetting. No one talks to Gandalf. Mm. I'm actually so low on my water that I had to hold it straight down for the straw to work. <laughs> Let's try that again. I didn't spam the button fast enough. Reset. The, the music's sending me, though. I'm, I'm glad I picked Zero Ranger, even though I literally always pick Zero Ranger. It's just such a good soundtrack. But, um, yeah, what was I talking about? Uh, streaming appetite is is the other coin of saturation that I, I don't think it's brought up enough, is the fact that uh, most people have, like, their favorite streamer. And unless you're, like, a child on summer break, there's not a lot of free time to go around. Uh, and especially assuming that your favorite streamer, which might not be the case, but assuming that your favorite streamer is someone who's doing it full time, I would say most of the time that's the case for people. Uh, 
they probably are live for a lot of hours in the day. Meaning, if you need someone to watch, why wouldn't you use your limited free time on your favorite streamer, right? Like, that, that adds up, I think. So, the fact that, like, most people are already full on streamers and don't really care to look for additional streamers to watch, um, I think is, like, the biggest, more of an impact than just, like, saturation on its own. Like, saturation, sure, is a problem, but it's not the same level of a problem as, like, saturation in the games market, right? Like, when people talk about how saturated Steam is, for example, that actually means something. Because, like, that is kind of the only metric when it comes to, to getting people to see your game. Like, people are always hungry for new games and new experiences if they're good, right? But, uh... Most people find one streamer that's good enough and are like, I'm taken, dude. That's my streamer. My streamer. So, I think saturation is kind of overstated compared to, uh, I don't know what the right term is. I said appetite. I think <laughs> appetite is, is a good enough term. Man, I, I'm feeling the Hobbit today, though. Like, this has been really good because I've been really consistent. I, I hazard to say that I've been really good, but I've definitely been consistent. So, it's, it's actually been kind of fun. I found the, uh, especially the stream before last, like, even in the last stream, I was, like, I was kind of sucking it up pretty hard. I was, I was sucking real hard. <laughs> um, but, uh, the stream before that, I was sucking even harder. Is that possible? Porn directors are still wondering. They haven't gotten back to my emails, though. <laughs> I've been sucking real hard. Um... Yeah, no, the stream where I streamed five hours of Hobbit and didn't even get close to sniffing a PB, that was pretty rough. Uh, didn't have too much fun on that one, but it's it's coming around, dude. It's, it's getting better and better. I'm sure the lower I push my time, the less I'm going to be happy. That's just kind of how speedrun goes, though, or speedrunning goes, I should say. The, uh, the better you are, the sadder you are, similar to competitive video games, which is why many people don't trust them, because if you've got a friend who's been playing, you know, a thousand hours of Guilty Gear, and they start saying things like, hey, you should really, you should really start playing Guilty Gear, don't fall for it. Uh, fighting games are a trap. <laughs> they only say that so that they can kick your ass. I would know as someone who says that so I can kick people's ass. Trust me on this. But it truly is the uh, the competitive ladder. I like speedrunning, though. Much more than, like, you know, actual competitive games. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I do play the, the odd Guilty Gear when it comes out, because I think Guilty Gear is kind of like, you know, a masterclass in, uh, in how to, you know, both design and balance fighting games. I'm sure plenty of people who are better at Guilty Gear would disagree with me in that, but uh, what is it? I was gonna say From Software. Arc System. Arc System, I think, is their name. They got like a shitty little scribbly doodle as their logo. They, uh, they simply don't miss. I'm sure they've missed in the past, but the only thing they regularly miss on is uh, more so to blame on the publisher side of things, I would say. But, yeah, the fucking price of it, like, look, uh, Arc System are certainly, like, the, probably just the best fighting games, um, you can get into, but also, Jesus Christ, dude, the, uh, the price of them. If you want to get, like, all the characters, good fucking luck, dude. The, uh, the season passes, and the season season passes, and the season passes to the season passes, um... It's, uh, it's rough. It's rough trying to play a fighting game these days. So yeah, anyways, what I was saying is, uh, if you're gonna get into something like Guilty Gear and a friend is recommending you do it, do not fall for the trap of playing the new one. Unless it's Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which I fucking love Dragon Ball Fighter Z, honestly. Like, um, eh, I think it's worse designed than Guilty Gear, 
but I have more fun with it because it's easier. Honestly, just being true. Just being true on my live stream. True, true, that's true. Um, yeah, Fighter Z is a shit ton of fun. Um, and it's, you know, it's got the... I mean, uh, other Arc System games do as well, right? Like, didn't they do the, uh, the team battles in... Not not Guilty Gear, the other one. Blaze Blue? Is that right? And is it Blaze Blue that they did the uh, the, the team fighting one in it? Anyways, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Fighter Z has like teams instead of just picking one character, which I had never done in a fighting game before, only playing uh, basically Guilty Gear. So it was fun. I could have made it to second platform, but I was scared. I don't want to reset here anymore, because I'm having fun. I just want to keep having fun. And I do that by not fucking up any tricks, ever. When you say it like that, it sounds so easy. Just, God, just don't fuck up. What have I been doing my whole life? How did I get in this position not knowing all you had to do was not fuck up? I've been nailing Bean Jump today. That's, like, the one I'm most proud of. Like, I'm kind of proud of the fact that I'm still somehow first trying Inside Info, despite, like, not getting any practice after, like, a miserable session. Like, I, I was failing Inside Info back to back to back to back. Uh, and then I just, like, streamed the next day and nailed it. And haven't failed it since. I genuinely think I have not failed the long jump on Inside Info since then. I'm probably misremembering, but it sounds better if I misremember, so I'm going to keep misremembering. That's the future I want to be a part of. All right. We're, we're cracked. We're cracked, gamers. Ahead by 18 seconds. Let's ruin that by stumbling around in these rocks. <laughs> Getting knocked off the platform by the bat while doing the long jump. That's my favorite. That's my favorite part of the run right there. Here we go. Oh, almost! He gave me a little love tap. Just just a slight nudge. Just to, just to let me know that he could kill me at any moment, but he didn't feel like it today. All right. Oh, we're kind of cruising. What was I talking about? Who fucking knows? <laughs> I lose my train of thought so fucking often while streaming. I feel like I've been slightly better about it recently, but it, it's always a persistent problem. I think it's like just those, those quirky little ADHD things. You know? There's some positives and negatives to undiagnosed ADHD. I think more so positives as a streamer. It's, it's probably beyond frustrating. Um, and did I say undiagnosed? It is diagnosed, although it was diagnosed when I was a child, so you can debate whether or not that's a real diagnosis. It probably is more representative of me now. I feel like, I don't know, therapy has never worked, but if I had to, like, convince a, uh, not a therapist, a psychiatrist, which I think the, that's the right one, right? The psychiatrist is the one that can prescribe you things. I think if I had to convince a psychiatrist of, like, any any sort of mental illness, I would just be incapable of doing it because my dumbass brain is like, you're above that. <laughs> don't let any weakness show. You're fine. You don't need to be prescribed to anything. Even though I, I probably, I don't know, maybe would benefit. What the fuck happened? Why'd my minecart- Oh! Okay, uh, since I'm out of water, and I don't know, I haven't gotten a message from my girlfriend, so I'm gonna assume I'm just, like, good to keep streaming. I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to reflect, to become a better person, and to remember to restart my game client after making it this far in the run, because if you don't restart your game client, your run is invalidated. <sighs> I'm going to go get some water. I'll be right back.
Uh, he hello. Welcome. Welcome to the <laughs> super unfortunate <laughs> circumstance. Moose, no. <laughs> Flex my cat for the raid? Hi. <laughs> the AFK raid? Will I grab my cat? <laughs> oh, fuck. Thank you. Thank you, Moose. I'm not sure if he's actually gonna be nice. I might have to take my cat out, like, immediately. But he looks like he's chillin'. I think he can sleep on the bed. Yo, what up? <laughs> Alright. Thank you. Thank you so much for the raid, Moose. You know what this means, hopefully. <laughs> uh, I hope that, uh, that you understand why I'm sitting in the minecart here. I'll allow you to take your guess if you want, but... I would rather not admit. But yeah, thanks for the raid. Let's uh, let's go back to actual gameplay for a little bit here. This is, I think, I think you actually, with with just that moose, just just a mere, not a not a five thousand raid from from critical, but with a with a fifty raid, you've broken my my viewership record. So I appreciate it. Uh, thankfully, I'm already an affiliate. Not that that means anything. But, uh, I don't have to worry about sustaining this viewership. Dude, it was, like, it wasn't the most demoralizing part of the streaming career, I think. I think that that has been the, uh, the ongoing, like, year of, uh, of streaming since I became an affiliate with no actual fucking increase in viewership to show for it. But, um... It certainly wasn't fun trying to like grind for uh, for affiliate, because you you truly feel it. Like you always feel it when you stream, but you truly feel it when you're trying to set an arbitrary milestone, uh, so that Twitch will recognize you and say that yes, you are a, a real person. You deserve to to be able to do this thing. Damn, how'd I do that? What? I don't think I did anything particularly impressive there. <laughs> oh, stream for a year? With, without anything to show for it? Ah, it's natural, baby. Just have zero self-esteem and roll with it. You know, if, if you're already at rock bottom, there's nowhere to fall. <laughs> Worst advice in human history. <laughs> Thank you for the follows, everyone. See, this is like, I have to actually try hard here. I have to pretend to be funny for a little bit so that people think I'm cool. It comes naturally, though. <laughs> uh, Alright. So, hey, uh, I assume you, you were maybe streaming Hobbit, although I did see you also stream uh, Mario 64. Now, <laughs> I don't mean to brag or anything, but if you need any lessons on SM64, I'm kind of a goaded 16-star runner. So just, just hit me up. Just hit me up if you need any advice on that. <laughs> just be fast and then you don't have to be funny see that's a strategy i've tried only problem is i'm kind of ass like i i can't really do the whole gameplay thing um <laughs> oh my hair okay sure if you're gonna compliment anything the thing that i had uh no active decision making on well i guess letting it grow out right but uh the thing that's totally up to genetics and random chance from birth. I'll take a compliment on that. <laughs> Fuck anything I've actually tried to to create as an individual in this world. The the you know, the vanity is where it's at. Hit me up with those kind of compliments all day long. This is why I got the face cam though, you know, show what you can. That's uh, that's what they always say. Show what you can. 
And gameplay is not on that list, by the way. Gameplay is not on that list. <laughs> so, if I have anything to show, it's trying to be mildly entertaining. And, uh, my hair. I'll, I'll roll with it. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks for that. I don't know what I would have done without that. I mean, I'm sure my girlfriend appreciates it uh, more than I do. It's kind of like, dude, out of any lottery to lose, like, having having farts that smell awful has to be up there, right? Like, that, that sucks. <laughs> like, I am thankful that I don't really have to deal with that, but... Out of anything you can't control that every person has to do, like, it kinda, man. Well, I guess you can somewhat control it by why you, or what you eat, right? But, I mean, we all know that even after finding out, even if a fucking doctor told you, hey, you should, you should avoid eating this food because it absolutely fucks your GI tract and, and that's probably why your fart smells so bad, we all know we're still eating cheese. Like, there's, there's no escaping it. Unless you're actively, like, if you puke when you eat it, you're, like, completely lactose intolerant. And I, I make it, like, a, a clear-cut case when I say actually lactose intolerant. Because, like, I feel, especially nowadays, you'll hear a lot of people that are like, I'm lactose intolerant. When, when uh, they just, like, get a little bit gassy when they drink milk. This, look, milk just doesn't agree with anybody. Like, that's just how dairy products are. I have, uh, my sister is actually lactose intolerant and vomits immediately upon it entering her stomach. Um, so, yeah, un unless you're actually lactose intolerant, we all know we're partaking in dairy products. Escape never works. It's just too good to pass up on the offer. But that being said, um, yeah, it's gotta suck if it, <laughs> if it makes your fart smell like ass. What's my SM64 16 star PB? Ugh, you're gonna make me flex, Moose? You're gonna make me flex in front of all these people? I don't mean to brag, but <laughs> I set a I set a pretty confident 38 minutes earlier. Like, I'm pretty cracked. I'm pretty cracked at SM64. I don't actually remember. I said 34 as a guess. It it might be worse than that. I remember it being sub-40, and that's all. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know anything about a SM64, that's horrible, by the way. I mean, it's not horrible. Look. Like, if you're getting started out, it was literally like, I don't know. I mean, I reset a lot, so it's hard to say exactly what run it was. But it was among my only runs I've ever done in my life. I guess you can say that literally at any time. Like, I could say it was among the only runs I've ever done in my life and still have, like, thousands of runs. Look, I haven't done many runs. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. I've done, like, literally a handful of casual runs, uh, like, a couple years ago. Not even on stream. It was before I started streaming. And, um, I did the runs today, and that's, that's the only time I have tried a, a 16 star or any star run in uh, SM64, but I'm pretty slick with it <laughs> because I play uh, SM64 ROM hacks. <laughs> so if you're starting out and you've never um, never attempted uh, an SM64 speed run, don't feel like uh, don't feel like sub-40 is bad when I say it's absolute dog shit and you should feel bad about it. Like, don't feel bad about that. Um, I'd just be saying shit. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. It, it's pretty impressive, honestly. Like, I should be patting myself on the back, really. Um, I did a great job today. Sub-40, sub, sub 40, huh? I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. But yeah, ROM hacks are good. I, uh, I've done, honestly, less than I would like to. I, look, I, I'm fucking dumb, and I know as soon as I say this, you're probably gonna fucking hate me for the rest of your life, but <laughs> out of any <laughs> SM64 ROM hack to start with, 
my dumbass brain was like, <laughs> I'm going to start with SM74, despite knowing it's absolutely horrible for a number of reasons, which it truly is. It's a... Uh, it's not very good. It's it's among the first SM64 ROM hacks that weren't just reskins uh, or like you know default vanilla SM64, but with added fire traps and thwomps and shit. Um, SM74 was was close to being one of the first, uh, though there wasn't that much competition making ROM hacks back then. Um, so what am I saying with all this? Yeah, I don't know. I'm stupid. I picked a bad one to start with, and I did, like, I, I played it casually, because I did, like, a shit ton of stuff casually before I started streaming, but then as soon as you start streaming, everything becomes content, right? Like, you, you have to, if, it, if you're gonna do it anyways, you have to stream it, and SM64 ROM hacks were one of those. I'm done with this. Fuck that run. That run sucked. SM74 is actually sick for speedrunning, though. I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, well, I don't know. How much can you skip? Like, what does the speedrun actually look for? I hope you're not talking about 156 stars or however many are actually in it. Because that sounds miserable. But I could imagine, like, some form of any percent being okay. There are there are some truly truly awful stars in SM74. But yeah, for a casual first ROM hack, there's definitely definitely better choices. Um, I mean, just for for reference on SM74's dumbassery, there's like there there's at least one. There might be two hundred coin stars in which there's only 100 coins in the whole level. I know there's definitely one. It's just satisfying doing the stars fast in dumb ROM hacks. Yeah, but like, you could be... You could be doing like, what's the good one that people like and actually do? Star Road? You could be doing Star Road. Like, that's the only thing I would be thinking about <laughs> if I was speedrunning SM74. Like, I, I know that there's probably not a super active community for uh, for any ROM hack speedruns, but I feel like if there is, uh, SM74 has got to be low on that list, right? That was, a, that was a clean... How the fuck was that not a gold? Was that a gold? I haven't noticed because I kind of forgot that I made it rainbow golds. It's not a gold! What the fuck was I on when I put a gold on that? <laughs> what the fuck was I taking? That felt clean as hell. I guess my my previous self was much better at Dream World than I am right now. That's fair. But dude, Moose, uh, I talked about it slightly briefly earlier. And I'll own up to it, right? I'm gonna say it to your face. That's how brave and confident I am, right? <laughs> this is this is faux confidence. Um, I, I mentioned it, and since I mentioned to you when you weren't here, I feel like it's only right to mention it when you are here. I uh, I said that anybody who doesn't admit this is a liar, and I believe it. Um, I feel like everybody in the Hobbit community, myself included, is a little upset it wasn't them, you know? Like, it's hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid that frustration. Like, it fucking owns for you, right? Like, that's sick as hell. But, god damn it, dude. <laughs> for such a small community, that's like a genuine, reasonable chance that it could have been any one of us. But, hey, you know, I'm glad it was you. I'm, I'm a big enough man to say on stream, I'm glad it was you, Moose. Because you hang out in my stream. <laughs> Cause, 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 you're a cool guy is what I meant to say. Cause you're a, you're a nice and funny guy. I should follow you. Cause I, I haven't even followed you back. And here you are raiding me with 52 viewers. What, what scumbag am I? I just take a follower from a cool person in the community and I'm like, I'll, I'll put that in the bank account. I'll take that follower to, to all the way home. I'll take it to the market. But... 
I genuinely, the, the here's the real reason, is because the only people I followed back on Twitch, and this is hella an excuse, but it's true, the only people I followed back on stream are people I've actually done something with on Twitch. Because, like, look, I don't want to... I don't want to just follow... I don't want to be the follows for follow guy, right? I don't think anybody wants to be the follows for follow. But... Uh, I was planning... Oh, that was sick. Nice down warp. I was planning on, uh... Organizing some races for the Hobbit. Because, like, look... I know I'm not going to get much better than, uh, 1855. I'm probably not going to catch up with you and Hark. But... If I can organize some races, I can start to have some fun again. So, uh, the plan is... If you're down... Uh, I was thinking about doing some, like... Well, it depends on how many other people want to join in. If it's only two of us, then it would be best of three. Or, well, best of whatever we decide, I guess. But best of X. And, uh, if multiple people want to join in, then it would probably be first to X. Just because, like, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a 14-minute speedrun. Um, I don't think that, uh... It would be too entertaining or dramatic to do one single race and be like, all right, even though I'm like, uh, you know, second or third on the leaderboard, I guess, sorry, Shockster, that world record's mine because I beat you in a race. That's how it works. I'm, I'm better than you. Give me your lunch money. Yo, thanks. Thanks, MK. I appreciate it. I, you are, you know, you have a special space in my heart. Both for <laughs> completely denying me on my content idea when I when I DM'd you on Twitter, and also for being the first person to uh, to follow me from the Hobbit community. You'll always have that. No one can ever take that away from you. But hey, you're you're also welcome to uh, to join in on the races if you want. I'm not shying away just because. Uh, I know that, like, there's probably very little chance of me actually winning. Even a single round. But, um... You know, I can dream. Uh, so I, I kind of just have to, <laughs> to... To invite people who are better than me because, you know... Otherwise, I don't have anybody to invite. <laughs> Uh, but I don't really care if I win. I just think it would be fun to do races. Because I just enjoy races more. It's it's much more fun to actually complete runs or, or get close or, you know, do no reset stuff than it is to fail troll hole once and get back to the main menu. Did my music stop again? Yes. There we go. So yeah, I would, I would like to do some races, and uh, that's why I don't follow any of you back, because as soon as we do races together, that's your incentive, right? Like, uh, I know, one follower, <laughs> you get one follower from, uh, from me. Isn't that special? If we, uh, if we do something together? I think it's special. I really, I put myself on a pedestal. But I, I don't know. Like, I saw you have the, uh, the races section in the Discord, MK, but I don't know, dude. Like, I get super discouraged. Like, I, you guys actually know what you're talking about on, on Speedruns Live or Speedruns... What the fuck is it? Whatever the actual Speedruns website is. Um, you guys know what you're talking about with that kind of thing. Like, I don't know how to set up actual official races where, like, I don't know. Do they even have it with Live Split? Where, uh... Where you could, like, time yourselves relative to each other. Surely Live Split doesn't have that kind of implementation. I don't actually know what Live Split does, honestly. Like, I, I interface with it very, very little. I've heard it's, like, a really, really sick, slick piece of software, but I don't, I don't mess with any of it. <laughs> I just uh, keep everything basically entirely default as it's shipped, and I'm like, that's, that's good enough for me, buddy. I was watching uh, Northern Lion, as I often do, while he was doing SM64. And someone in his chat said, because he was wondering what the reset hotkey was, someone in his chat was like, it's three on numpad by default. I made the timer, smiley face. And then I checked their, their Twitch username and they actually did make the timer. 
That's so fucking cute that, like... <laughs> I don't know. I think it's incredibly cute that they're still like active in uh, in Twitch communities and enough to be able to to point out that hey, it's it's three on the numpad. That's sweet to me. That owns. One of these days, I'll be able to read chat. By the way, I probably should have when I reset, but I'm just like <sighs> I just got like broken speedrunner brain, right? You know. As soon as you hit that reset button, you want to jump back into it because it's like a dopamine treadmill that never ends. Or more aptly, it's a dopamine treadmill that crashes and burns multiple times per hour, but I don't know, somehow you feel like your doctor's recommendation to work out more matters in this situation, so you keep doing it. <laughs> no fucking doctor is advocating speedrunning. Let me set the record straight. My movement's been kind of slick today. Ignore that slide. We don't talk about that slide. I've just been, I've been feeling the Hobbit today. So if you were going to raid me on any day, this is the one. But yeah, I never even finished what I was going to say originally when I, when I uh, addressed you, Moose. Um, I got so distracted by ego stuff. <laughs> I was going to say, um, this is like a, a good case study for me because I've always had the belief that uh, that raids don't actually do anything to, to your thanks rocks to your long-term metrics but on the second day streaming I mean if you've got enough momentum to keep 52 of those viewers that's still massive so it uh, it'll be cool to see it'll be cool to see the success of moose Let's see where that goes. Does he fall off? Does he address uh, himself as better than the majority of his chatters live at TwitchCon? Probably not, you know? Probably not, but we'll, we'll see where, where, where Moose ends up when he gains success. <laughs> you never know what success will do to someone. Also, goddamn, I forgot to, to look at chat. Look at that, dude. MK getting a love. MK getting the love in someone else's chat. You love to see it. We had some races a bit ago and even some more ideas to spice it up, but there weren't that many people interested. And setting it up was a lot of work. Man! See, but I think you're going about it all wrong. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna lecture you at your own job. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it's I mean look, don't get me wrong, organizing any amount of people, especially live streamers, is a huge pain in the ass. Being someone who tried to organize... Oh, fuck. Get me off of the... If I'm gonna read chat, at least get rid of the menu music so it's not double playing. Um, speaking as someone who tried to organize blind races of games every Saturday for, like, months when I started streaming, even if you're, like, good friends with these people and, you know, you've got a Discord so everything's, like, re like reasonably organized, getting people to agree on a start time absolutely impossible um so i understand that scheduling is difficult but i don't know i would hope that scheduling would be the worst of it like um if you're just doing it like casually i don't see like i don't know i just look i'm gonna be honest i got intimidated when i just clicked on the races uh channel in your discord like i saw like i saw some stuff that made me think man I don't want to deal with all this, basically. There's life split implementation for multiple race websites. See, that's sick. Life split's cool. And the developer makes me smile by being cute in chat. So wholesome. Oh, shit, Moose got a PB again? Are you talking about the, uh, the one that I saw before I went live that I already mentioned? Or did you get another PB that I'm unaware of? Regardless. I am, like, honestly never gonna catch up. <laughs> That's my main takeaway from fucking you and Hark. Hark especially, like, Hark is, is insane. Legitimately insane for how quickly he set his time. Like, that, uh, it's unapproachable how fast he set that insane time. Really, really puts me to shame. Um, yeah, you know, cool. 
I read chat. 1325, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Needs retime? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm still waiting on my retime. I put in my fucking 19-minute run, and I've already set a PB before my run got verified. Don't, don't take that as a slight on anyone who's a verifier. Uh, MK included, I think. I think you're a verifier. He must be. Like, there's no fucking way you're not. But, um... Yeah, dude. I, like, I don't even feel like I should <laughs> submit my, my 1855, because, like, I know... I know as much as everyone else knows that 1855 is, uh, is not that impressive, especially when compared to, like, my, uh, my 1930-whatever, what was it? Was it 1950, even? It might have just barely been a sub-20. But it's not that much improvement, and I've still got, like, major time saves on my PB. So I'm probably just not going to submit until it's, uh, relevant to do so. Like, look. I don't wanna I don't wanna be the guy who just <laughs> submits like like look, if you're moose and you're like down at the bottom, you can flex your your you know massive cock. You can you can use that for an advantage in submitting like three runs in the course of three days. Like I don't think anyone's gonna be upset about that. But <laughs> I'm not gonna be the guy who is pushing another verification on a 30 second improvement on a run that's like essentially 10 minutes uh, behind world record. That ain't me, Chief. The day after, the day, well, I think it was like two days after my last VB. When's the last time I streamed? It was, uh, you know, who cares? Bangers? We got to the banger section of the Zero Ranger soundtrack. Banger alert. I mean, they're all kind of, you know, they bang in their own way, but these bang hard. Man, I hate it when the jump input doesn't work, but I guess I would rather the jump input not work than the slash input not work. And I guess I would rather the slash input not work than the slash input working and not getting the slope boost. There's there's levels to this. There's layers. It's like, uh, it's like an onion. It's like an ogre in that way. Many people are saying this. Speedrunning is a lot like ogres from Funny Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> you can't shake a stick in in a forest of speedrunners without hearing somebody pop out of the woods and say speedrunning is a lot like Funny Shrek. I've always said that. I hate it when I go too far on that and don't adjust and don't get my slash jump immediately, so I just slide the fuck off. Hate that. Hate that for me. But what else do I have to banter on? I, I got distracted by all this, like, raid shit? I'm surprised. Let's banter about this, dude. I can't fucking believe I kept my cool in a 52-person in a raid. Can we all pat myself on the back for that one? Can we, can we give myself a round of applause for not completely losing it at uh, the slight sign of viewership? I'm a changed man. The first time I got a 10-person raid, I legitimately didn't know what to do. I was I was a complete nervous wreck. But I guess I'm glad I had that with a 10-person raid to kind of, like, temper myself for, uh, for future expectations. I actually don't know what I would have done if, uh, if I got the critical raid. So, considering you kept any consistent viewership out of that, uh, like, good on you. Because I probably would have been so much of a nervous wreck that everybody mass reported me until I was taken off the uh, off the platform. Fuck this dude. Fuck this dude. Can't even speak straight. I can't speak straight in the best of times. When uh when the slightest bit of nerves get to me, I'm I'm out of there. Anyone else think about the fact that I've been uh streaming for months well not just streaming just using my computer for months without a without a good chair leading to probably permanent back damage uh, in the later years of my life but you know we don't have to worry about that till I'm 80 or 50 who's to say when the later years of my life are gonna be I don't I don't treat myself the best I'll be honest 
You know, you already heard me talk about cheese. I, no matter how bad it is for me, I can't get it out of my life. I can't stop dreaming about it. But yeah, uh, my back is probably definitely fucked. For a number of reasons, not just because I am not using a good chair for a few months. Um, it's probably uh, you know, just the computer use on its own. Just the, the sitting at a computer for hours every day is, is not so great for your back. But especially the chair, man. If I, <laughs> if I have like a popped lumbar by age 30, you fucking know. You know good as hell I'm blaming it. On the, the, like, three months that I didn't have a decent PC chair. Absolutely not will I, will I blame it on the, uh, the regular computer usage and, uh, probably poor posture in general. It's all going down on the fact that I had a shitty chair for three months. And three months is optimistic. It's been three months. I'm, I'm in no position to afford an office chair right about now. Those things are expensive as fuck. Have permanent back damage already. Let's go, back damage squad. Who else up? <laughs> Who else up causing permanent back damage? Just me? Surely not. I mean, look, permanent back damage sucks and all, but I think it's, uh, compared to the other things that being, you know, diagnosed as too online. I think that permanent back damage is, is socially probably the least of your worries for, uh, for too much internet and computer consumption. I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna go so far as to say I'm above it. I should probably touch grass more than I do. I do find myself getting uh, probably more angry than I need to at dumb bullshit on Twitter. I'm not above it, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just like you guys. I'm just a regular guy. I'm literally just a dude. But, um... Dude, it, it does fuck with me, though, because, like, I'm so online. Like, I'm, I'm definitely more online than I should be, but, like, when I see someone and I look at them and I'm like, the way you're presenting yourself is so, like, just completely in disregard for not only your own, like, perception of how people view you. Basically what I'm saying is, uh, when I see somebody and I go, ooh, that's a bad look. Um, it takes a lot. Like, that, that means something coming from me, who is already terminally online. Like, how much more online than me do you have to be to be that unadjusted to society? Like, Man, I don't know. I think it, it also depends on, like, what kinds of online you are. Like, look, if you're the kind of guy who's picky about what political discord you're a part of, I think you're already, you're already too far gone, buddy. I don't know. You, you might, you might n need, like, uh, a doctor's attention immediately. You, you might need, uh at least a few years in the hyperbolic time chamber with just the sun. Just the sun blasting on you. You don't need to do any hardcore training or anything. Just just some vitamin D in your system to, to cure that level of onlineness. I've only known one person like that in my life, but good lord, was it a was it such a nice feeling to just say goodbye and be like Man, literally every time I interact with this person, it's a negative interaction. Like, you gotta learn, hopefully quicker than I did, that, uh... Why would you ever call someone a friend if, uh... If literally every single interaction leaves you feeling bad at the end of it? Sometimes in pity, sometimes in, uh... In anger. Choose wisely who you're friends with, because, I mean, especially if they, like, don't respect you at all, like, just, just get the fuck out of there. If they're, if they're saying things that are in a direct attack on your own humanity and, and leave you feeling impure to your soul, just, you know, I think it's not worth it. There are a lot of things that aren't worth it in life, and, and toxic friendships are, are certainly up there. 
certainly up there, for me at least. I don't have too much, look, I'm privileged as fuck. I'm not gonna act like I have any real experience with the hardships of life. You know, I've been living in my mom's house rent-free for the last, oh fuck, eight years of my life? Well, okay, I mean, technically 24 years of my life, because it's not like my mom ever disowned me or anything. But, uh, specifically in regards to going to school, or, or having left school, I'll admit it. I'm a burden. I'm a burden on my family. I, I see that. I, you know, it's probably better to own it than to, to act like, um, you know, you're, you're better than that. Though, I don't know. I, it's also like, I don't want to make people feel bad either, because, trust me, like, moving out is fucking hard. Moving out is hard when you work at GameStop for a year, and the best they can do is bump your minimum wage up to $9 an hour after a promotion, even. And that promotion is the only raise I ever got. Uh, again, I also didn't uh, ask my boss ever for a raise. Um, that's on me. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, it's kind of an awkward position where, like, to me, I think the standard, thank you for the follow, I think the standard of, like, what you're expected as a worker is to, like, only get one raise per year, which is probably not fair, but considering I worked there a year and did get, like, a sizable percentage increase raise, I, uh, I didn't feel like I could negotiate a raise until I quit, and, uh, that was the end of that. I could tell that was way too fast when I pressed the space bar button. Why do all Hobbit runners have long hair, though? Is it true? Is it true? I saw a bit of your, uh, your face cam last night. Last night? Two nights ago? Last night? This is how you know I've hit, like, disgusting meat levels, when you can't even name what day something you did- It was probably yesterday. If you can't remember if something happened yesterday, you're- you're too far gone, and I'm definitely a case of too far gone. Thankfully, I don't have hairy feet. Well, I don't know, probably, like, as hairy as, like, any guy does. But, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I, uh, I've got the genes to keep my hair on my head instead of my body. You know, there's probably times in middle school where I would have wanted it the other way, since, uh, I don't know. Fucking... <laughs> it's so weird that, like... There is, a, there is a period in everyone's lives where they're kind of, like, flexing how much puberty affected them. Like, oh, oh, you haven't had male pattern baldness yet? What the fuck are you doing, dude? Oh, low T count, low T count. This guy doesn't have male pattern baldness. Uh, let's, let's, let's communicate him from the friend group. This is shit movement. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful we're past that, that level of discourse. That's why my speedruns haven't been fast enough. Fuck, dude. I need to start shaving off some pubes and taping them to my feet. There's the strats. No one talks about the metagame of, uh, of speedrunning. It's all about the foot hair when it comes to Hobbit. All about the foot hair. I do think there's a decent bit to be said about the mental, though. Like, I came in to, to Hobbit today feeling, like, confident as hell after, you know, it's not very impressive, but, like, back-to-back, -back, uh, SM64 PBs that I didn't even save with live split because I didn't set up proper splits for it. But, um, yeah, coming into Hobbit already confident, and I also think that, like, getting a breather and, like, not playing Hobbit for a while actually helps playing a different game. Does he have the Charlie impersonation? Is that what you're looking for? I'll give you one, okay? You get one Charlie impression. You better use it wisely, because this is the only one you're going to get for the rest of your life, so treat it with care. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be too loud, sorry, but there you go. That's my, that's my Charlie impression. 
And that's all you'll ever get out of me. Dude, I fucking hate impressions. Mostly because I'm ass at them. But, uh... When you're ass at impressions... <laughs> like, I feel like impressions are one of those things that, like, literally everybody gets them forced upon them, right? Like, everybody is asked to do blank impression at some point in their lives. But it's hard to actually be good at impressions. Especially if it's, like, a voice you haven't practiced. Like, I can't fucking... The best I can do is my Australian accent, but, like, a fucking... Like, you can fucking tell. Like, it's not very good. And it's, like, it borders on... It... I can do the R. <laughs> I can't actually string together sentences with an Australian accent, but like, you know, if you told me to say a single word in Australian, which I'm now going to treat it as if it's an own, its own language, if you give me a single word to say in Australian, I'll probably do like a, a decent job, but I have not practiced the accent well enough to be able to talk in it. All I can do is the R, which, I mean, it's, it's something, right? But it's not very much. Fuck. It's not very much. He's Cactus? What does that even mean? You said that because Moose did one recently? That's fair. I do feel like, like, fucking impressions, though. Look, impressions have to be one of the most embarrassing things to do even if you're good at them. Because, like, sure, it can be impressive to be good at an impression, but at the same time, like, I've watched a stream in my life uh, where one of the guests was constantly doing impressions. And I'm not gonna say they were bad impressions, because, like, you know, as far as impressions go, they were all right, but it's just, like, Incredibly embarrassing to be the only guy putting on a funny voice, like... Oh man, you don't want to be that guy. Let it be known that you do not want to be that guy. In case you were wondering and thought that he was really cool, I'm telling you. Think what you want, you don't want to be that guy. It's Australian slang, I forgot what it meant. He's Cactus is Australian slang? No fucking way. That's some complete bullshit. Australians do this shit all the time. Speaking as someone with, uh, well, I guess two Australian friends, they're constantly trying to convince you that certain phrases are definitely a thing. They're never a thing. The only thing is getting sickies at the Savo. Like, that's true. True. True that. That's true. Getting sickies at the Savo. <laughs> I can't do so Servo. I can't do Servo. I'll always go for it, you know? Like, if requested, I'm a fucking internet clown. That's what live streaming is. Like, if you're too, like, arrogant to do a fucking shitty impression, what are you trying to do on Twitch? Like, like nobody should think they're above that on Twitch.tv. Twitch is, like, the fucking lowest brow you can get. Like, this is the bottom of the bucket for entertainment. If you think you're above doing shitty impressions, Think again, Buster. The word cactus. I heard it from Ozzy Man himself. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to do some research. I'll, uh, I'll ask my Australian buds if cactus is a, is a real thing or not. But cactus is, is not even fun to do because there's nothing about cactus that's different in an Australian accent. You know, there's a few things here and there that the Australian accent changes up, but for the most part, like. There's really not that much different from, from, like, an American accent. They want you to think that it's, like, vastly different. The biggest thing is the R, you know? They do say O's, like, uh, significantly differently than we do. But other than, like, giving everything a soft R uh, instead of a hard R, which is probably better if you're a live streamer, though you should probably avoid that topic in general. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you had to... Don't do the hard R. <laughs> this is my, my streaming tutorial. If prefaced with doing a hard R or not, my best advice would be don't engage, but... But uh, definitely the soft one is better. Anyways, that joke aside, <laughs> moving on... Um, yeah, they... they The biggest two things are that they... Uh, 
any word that ends in an R, they, they do nice and gently, and uh, they say their O's like they're about to throw up. And that's all you need to know. If you, if you get those two things, you can do, like, a decently convincing enough accent. But my problem is that when I'm trying to, like, do an accent, my brain tells me, like, oh, well, it's an accent, so it's supposed to sound differently than your American accent, right? So, like, every single vowel and consonant that exits my mouth, I say differently, even though a lot of, you know, noises... That was loud. A lot of noises in the Australian accent are the exact same as in the American accent. So, anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, that's accent tutorial 101 for those who want to uh, to learn how to do an Australian accent. I don't even know how to like explain how to do the O. Like, it genuinely took me a while to do the R. Um, best I could say. <laughs> It's like, I, I made the joke about it, it being near throwing up. It kind of does. Like, you feel it at the back of your throat a lot more than you do with uh, with an American O. But I don't really know what I do differently with my tongue. R. I don't really do anything differently with my tongue. O. R. 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 And I, uh, look. It's kind of weird, because... Okay, sorry. Double music. Um... Yeah, it's kind of weird, because I have, you know, noise-canceling headphones, so I can't really hear what I sound like. And the Australian O sounds really different with noise-canceling headphones. Like, it sounds like I'm doing a fucking terrible job, and maybe I am just doing a terrible job. But, uh, it, it hits different when you got headphones on. You don't hear any of that, uh... I don't know, what is it when you have, like, uh, when you have, like, earplugs in? It's like less of the actual throat noise and more of your your bones rattling that's probably like complete bullshit but that's what people tell you <laughs> that's what people explain uh your voice sounding differently when when you're wearing noise canceling headphones versus not who knows what it actually is it's probably just the fact that you can hear less of your voice if i had to guess i don't think it has anything to do with your bones <laughs> rattling <laughs> Uh, fuck. Anyone else huge fans of the, the Rattle Me Bones <laughs> video game? By video game, I mean... Can you even call, like, toys like that board games? For some reason, I have, like, extreme nostalgia for the Rattle Me Bones advertisement. Um, that toy, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, is actually, like, impossible to find. And I think the last time I looked for it, it's not actually called Rattle Me Bones. It's called fucking, like, Pirate Jimmy or something. Who knows? Uh, but whatever it is, the last time I looked, the only offers I saw for it... Like, I was thinking, you know, I'll buy this as a joke present. Because it was, like, uh, you know, an inside joke between a friend of mine. Uh, but the only seller I could find that had Rattle Me Bones sold it for, like... Or was trying to sell it for, like... $80. Uh, the joke is not worth that. $80 and also on eBay it was listed as having missing parts. Which, like, I don't know. What do I do? What do you fucking do if you give some a Rattle Me Bones uh, present for their birthday and it doesn't rattle? Like, it's missing all the bones. The brones, as I said. Ah, fuck. Alright. Well, that's as far as that uh, bit of commentary got me. I really thought I could spend a whole hour talking about Rattle Me Bones, but... Turns out the topic was pretty limited. I don't know, dude. I've got nothing else to talk about. I'm not very interesting. I, uh, I make games for, for all the new people here. Dude. You know, it's it's like it sounds cool and you can use it as like a flex. Like, oh, I've got two video games that I released on Steam and I'm the only one who, like, worked on them. The only things I outsourced were audio. Uh, and that's cool, I guess. But, like, let me put it this way. Uh... When I was playing VR chat when it first came out with my Australian mate of mine, uh, the first thing he did to, to fucking be a shitty little asshole, a, a little freak, was uh, run around the, 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 I don't even remember what it was called, like the, the VR chat room that we were in, and tell absolutely everybody there, hey, hey, this guy's released a game on Steam. Um... And it was embarrassing, more than anything. So if, if that 
doesn't say enough. Just know that I don't really advertise the fact that I make games that often because they're nothing to write home about. Let's all be real. It's uh, it's an afterthought of my career, you know? When I grew up... <laughs> <laughs> when I grew up, I didn't say I want to make video games. That sounds nothing like me. I said I want to play video games. You know, that's actually a reasonable topic. Um, let's let's ignore the fact that I make games for a while because it's not very interesting. I don't need to reset on uh, on a single failed troll hole, but I don't know. I'm having fun resets or not. I think the the commentary is going well enough, so I'm just sending it basically. As little as I can pay attention to the run, the better. And I only really have to pay attention to the run when there's a chance of me actually PBing. So as long as I constantly squash that hope and dream out of existence, I can uh, I can focus on commentary the whole time. Like like I want to reset right now because my movement's sloppy, but I'll you know I'll send it. I'll send it. Um, but yeah, here's here's something. Uh, anyone else as a kid? <laughs> From, like, you know, their caring mother, uh, who, who wants to see you succeed in life. Anyone else as a kid, uh, get told about game testing from their mom? Like, oh, like, I know that you said you want to make video games, but you can make money just playing video games! Isn't that great? Good fucking lord. Dodged a bullet with that one. I would love to have that skill. Making games is cool. Guess what, Revan underscore 247? Um, it takes less than you would think to get those skills. Especially, which I do recommend, using a game engine like Unity or Game Maker. Something that comes with a lot of tools that, like, do a lot of the work for you. Like, do not, do not, and I can't stress this enough, do not even think about making your own game engine until you've made a game in someone else's engine first. Just woke up how the runs? Good. Good. I'm not sure what that bro was about. Maybe it was about uh, <laughs> video game testers. Although, if it has anything to do with my viewership, don't tell me, dude. Don't tell me what my viewership is sitting at. I'm nervous. Like, uh, I haven't been doing the streaming thing for that long. I'm shy. Thanks for the info. Like, dude. Making games is so much easier than people make it out to be. Um, if you're using something like Unity or or Game Maker, you can make your first game in like a month of learning. Not a month of developing, but a month of learning and like implementing things into the engine as you learn them. Uh, you can make a game. Making games with engines has gotten so much easier than it used to be. Uh, like, like, you know, it's it's not necessarily wrong that games used to be like this insane task that only very few people should even think about doing, and you probably want to get like a, a master's degree in computer science or something. I doubt you ever had to do that, but people will certainly make you think you have to, even nowadays. Um, you can make games without any programming knowledge. Uh, like, if that's what you want to do, there are multiple examples of games that have been made without any programming. Uh, if you want proof, the one that always comes to my mind is... I think it's just called The Beginner Guide or Beginner's Guide or something. Uh, you can find it on Steam. It's by, the, well, one of the developers that made The Stanley Parable. But... Uh, it's a first-person narrative game with, uh, I mean, you know, you can call it what it is. It's a walking simulator. If you want me to say it, I'll say it. It's a walking simulator. But still, if, like, you want to make a walking simulator and the only thing you care about in your game is the story, you can do a lot without any programming knowledge, and that game was made without any programming knowledge. I mean, I say any programming knowledge, you still kind of have to know, like, how things work. To, to use pre-made systems. Like, they were using sources, like the source game engines, uh, pre-made systems, which I have no experience in. But look, I'll speak from what I do know. Game Maker has a shit ton of, like, uh, pre-made collision code, pre-made character code, like, movement. Like, there's a lot of pre-made code that, like, 
it's not the best, and it's probably not going to give you the best results, and you might find yourself frustrated, but it's come a long way, and, like, even the pre-made code stuff in Game Maker, like, I'm pretty sure it has enough variables that you can get more accurately, like, what you want out of it. Like, when I first tried to learn Game Maker as, like, a 12-year-old growing up, it was not robust enough that I thought the pre-made tools were good enough. Um, when I grew up with Game Maker, if, like, you basically got the, the preset code, like, preset movement code, preset platforming code, preset collision code, and there were no variables you could change about that at all, but I think the way it currently works in Game Maker, like, the, the updated version, uh, is that, like, every single bit of pre-made code has, like, very easy to tweak variables without even opening the code, so you can more accurately, like, if you want to, like, really tighten down on the physics of your character jumping, you can mess with the sliders uh, until you get your results instead of actually cracking open the code. Anyways, sorry, I've got enough on that. Um, I'll probably keep talking about it, but let me read chat. Let me, let me, let me be a real streamer and read chat here. <laughs> the video game tester comment really hit different. You turn off your viewer numbers? Yeah, same. Same, dude. Don't don't feel bad about that. Like, literally the probably... Well, fuck, dude. Before Moose raided me, I was literally talking about the fact that I need to stop saying I'm streaming to zero viewers. Because, like, more often than not lately, I have had at least a few people. So it probably doesn't feel good for me to talk about zero viewership when I've got a few people watching me. Or maybe it feels special. Maybe you're like, ooh, he, he, he doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> It probably feels more often than not bad, though, so I'm gonna try and shy away from the zero viewer comments. Um, but yeah, I also, I don't know, I, I, I never have viewership turned on, so who knows how much I've actually kept from Moose's raid. Probably, like, not much. Like, to, I mean, look, to go two levels down in raid... That's gotta, you gotta really be trying for that. Like, it's already difficult to keep any viewership from, from like, a, a large streamer's raid. But to have them stream and that viewership be kept, and then they raid someone and people are still like, yeah, I'm here to check out someone new. Uh, I would imagine. Well, I don't know. People are saying I'm doing great, so fuck it. I guess I'm doing great. <laughs> Whatever. 100% agree with Will Pending. Anyone can do it. It is intimidating at first, but the best thing you can do is just start and you'll learn so much. It's so true. This. This. Uh, upvotes to the left. But like genuinely. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, true. Everything they said was right. It is not a complete fabrication. I'm being so loud. My, my cat doesn't even want to sleep in here. They've navigated from the bed to like the, the corridor of my, my hallway before my room to get some silence. But, uh, yeah, for real. Like, people make a huge deal. Look, I'm gonna say something that no one else will tell you when it comes to game development. The easiest part is programming. Um, well, I'm sure that programmers will probably tell you that, and I'm biased. I program. You know, I learned programming before anything else. Um, so, you know, maybe you can hear everything I'm saying and, like, well, you don't have a foot to stand on because you know how to program. So how would you know if it's uh, if it's easy to do? I know enough to know that the tools have gotten significantly better. And I fucking love hearing about stories from people who have no programming experience whatsoever. Making games much better than I have. Uh, like Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. I will say nothing but positive about this game. It's one of my favorite JRPGs I've ever played. No one's talking about it, which is why I feel like I have to talk about it extra loudly, because seriously, if you've ever played a JRPG in your life and had even remotely an enjoyable time, I would recommend Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass for a number of reasons. The gameplay is better than, like, AAA products like Dragon Quest XI. Like, there's actually thought into the design, and... The story is good? Anyways, Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass is great, and I'm pretty sure the developer, if they don't know- See, this is one of the questions. I tried to get an interview with them. 
I tried to get an interview with the developer, but uh, it, it's a sole developer as well. I tried to get an interview with the developer, but he's busy. That's fair. I understand. I am, after all, a zero viewer streamer, as everybody knows. Uh, so, but they did. They did give me the time of the day and actually considered doing the interview. So, no, I don't mean like uh, they're genuinely busy. They're working on their next game and trying to get a Kickstarter out for it. So, nothing against Casey Ozimi. I have no idea how to pronounce their last name. But, um, yeah, I wanted to ask them how much programming knowledge they actually know. Because, uh, oh, fuck, I just realized I've been streaming to, like, zero music for a while now, haven't I? Let me get that going. Just resetting the same playlist because it's easy. Somewhere in time. Zero Ranger. Fuck. All right, let me, let me read. Um, thanks for the push to try it. Trust me, like... It seems daunting at first, and there are going to be a lot of pitfalls while you're learning how to make games. I've stumbled through all of them, so I would know. Uh, I, I don't mean to make it seem like it's easy, because it's definitely not easy, but it's easier than people make it out to be. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? I, I think Casey, did. If, if they did know programming knowledge, they probably didn't know much, and the reason I think that is because the credits have very few people listed, but the game was made in RPG Maker, by the way. I, I probably should have said that first and foremost. Obviously, if you want to make a JRPG, um, the countless RPG Maker game horror games out there should tell you that it takes literally no skill or experience to make a JRPG in RPG Maker. Um, so long as you're okay with the restrictions. It's obviously a very restrictive uh, engine to work in as far as what you can do with it. Though I've heard it's better nowadays. I mean, all engines that are publicly available have gotten better, so I don't doubt it. But, um, yeah, I, I would love to ask Casey how much programming knowledge they have because the only, well, more or less, I think they had like some small contributors mentioned but the only credits that I saw that seemed like they had some heft behind it as far as, like, what they did to help out in development were, uh, they had some scripts credited for RPG Maker. And, like, literally all of the scripts listed, to my eyes, seemed like all of the custom code that I could imagine being in the game. So, like, if they did do any programming for Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass, um... I don't want to be like an asshole and be like it doesn't show because I have no idea, uh, like I said, what like programming an RPG maker even looks like. But it strikes me as a game that was made with uh, with little programming, at the very least, little programming experience. Um, so yeah, you know, fucking, especially if you want to make a JRPG, uh, you you definitely do not need to know any programming knowledge. But let me, let me say what my original point was going to be, which is that, uh, yeah, dude, like, uh, programming is probably the most overstated difficulty, uh, when it comes to making games. And, like, it depends on how you want to do it, because, like, I'm a fucking dumbass and think I can do everything by myself, so not only am I having to, you know, learn programming, learn how to animate, which is awful, but I feel like I've gotten slightly better at animating things even though it's awful, <laughs> like, animating is really, really difficult. I would genuinely say that getting good at animating is infinitely harder than getting good at programming, because, like, literally all you have to do to get good at programming is get to the point where you know what to Google. And that sounds like a joke, because it, like, is kind of a joke, um, but so is the idea behind a professional programmer. Don't get me wrong, you know, there's... There's fucking crazy freaks like Carmack out there making, uh, making Doom with like a pencil. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> was that a was that a timely, relevant bit of a uh, bit of gaming history? Probably not. I, I doubt that joke landed. But I also couldn't remember if his first name was John. I was like, there's no way his name is John Carmack. Though I'm pretty sure it is. 
Like, what a what a default ass character selector first name. Sorry, sorry, John. Your your last name's interesting enough to to be worthy of note. Why do I keep stopping there? I'm a dummy. But uh, yeah, it really doesn't take much to become a quote unquote good programmer. Like, there are good practices, especially if you're going to be working in a company. Like, yeah, if you're going through code reviews, like, you want to know what you're doing uh, enough to not get yourself in trouble. Um, but if you're just making games for yourself, you do not need to be good at programming in the slightest. Uh, like, literally the threshold is reach the point where you know how to Google a problem you're having. Like, because when you start out, you have no idea what to even look for. And I'm still working through those issues today as someone who's learning OpenGL and, like, good network code formats. Like, I, I tried. I really tried to, like, wrap my head around what a good network code infrastructure looks like and, like, how the, the architecture should look between your client and your server. And it's just a complete fucking mess. Like, a lot of it comes down to, like, it's less so, like, what most people think about programming is they, they think that learning programming is learning what to type, which it absolutely is not at all. Learning how to be a better programmer is, like, <laughs> I don't even know. It's, it's more, like, philosophical than anything. It really does have more to do with how you set up your code and, like, how much you're going to hate your future self by the way you set it up. Um, and certain people have certain tolerances for that kind of thing. Like, I developed the entirety of the last game I made, and this is going to make, like, some people actually puke. Um, I shouldn't say the entirety. So, uh, like, I, I'm trying to fucking skirt around the edge and avoid saying the name of the game. I made Bounty Below. You can find that information out easily enough if you just you know, went to my Discord or something, so it's not like I'm embarrassed to say it, but I don't... <laughs> I'm not particularly proud to say it either. Um, the game I made is an idle game, uh, and the idle portion of the game was, like, finished within a few months, uh, and I spent way too long developing a roguelike, like, twin-stick shooter roguelike mode <laughs> that you can do in it, and that took an extra four years. So don't do what I did, for starters. Um, beyond that, I learned a lot, for sure, I learned a lot, but to, to make it clear that you do not have to be a good programmer to, to make games, I made the entire idle section of my game without knowing about the resources class in Unity, and I, I guarantee I made people puke there, um, because the resources class is your main way of, like, getting assets like, I don't know how to word this. The, the resources class is your main way of taking assets that you've put into Unity and describing in code what you want to do with them. I think that's the best explanation I'm going to get across there. So how the fuck did I do it? In just about the worst way possible. Um, Unity also has a system where... You know, because it's, you know, a very user-friendly engine. Um, it has the the functionality where if you have a, a script, which is like what all of the coding in Unity is. You're just scripting stuff. If you have a script and you make a public variable for that script, um, you can look at that... What am I doing? I'm not even long jumping. Who am I? You can look at that script in the Unity editor and uh, see that public variable and just like slot in an asset into that. That is genuinely how I got most of my assets into a usable form in code uh, for, for both my first game and Bounty Below uh, until I started work on the dungeons mode and I was like, there's got to be a better way. Turns out there definitely is a better way. <laughs> there, is, there is definitely a better way. Probably a handful of better ways. Literally anything would be better than what I did. But um, I'm going to keep this run going because fucking... Look, I just want to... At this point, I'm not going to end the stream without finishing a single another run. Um, and I'm getting close to wanting to end stream. So I'm probably just going to finish this one out no reset style. 
and uh, and chill and and chill with the rest of my night. But um, yeah, sorry. What was I saying before the fucking unity shit? Like I I still regularly um, deal with uh, you know programming woes of of like learning new stuff. But it, it's not what people think. It's it's genuinely not just like ooh ah uh, what do I type here? How does this work? Like it's it's more so like. I know literally everything I can type, but why do I use it, and when do I use it, and this is bad, but I said no reset, so whatever. I usually get that on the second grab anyways, let's be real. I, I, I don't exactly have the reputation to be resetting on that. Um, yeah, programming is, is definitely more so like... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, learning the, the architecture of, like, what good code looks like. But, again, that's totally optional. You, you don't need to know that to make good games. You certainly need to know that if you're going to make your own game engine, though. Which is why I absolutely do not recommend anybody ever try and, like, without any prior knowledge on, like, programming, especially. If you're trying to make your own game engine, like, from zero, absolute worst decision you could do. I know, because I tried it before I, I gave up and went to game engines. That was like a huge pitfall that if I can get other people to avoid, um, please do, because like, you will not find happiness in, uh, in making your own game engine if you have no idea what you're doing. And just like, it's such a good idea, no matter what, to like, make a game in an engine first, just because like, it does a good job of teaching you how to make an engine. Like, fuck. I genuinely had no idea what I was doing when I was first making game engines, but after using Unity for a while... Oh, thank God. I slashed way too early. After using Unity for a while, I, uh, I figured out what, like, a, a somewhat decent architecture should look like, and, and you know, that's why I'm, uh, I am trying to make a game engine now. But the, uh, I'll, I'll be real. The, the biggest like, pitfall that you're going to fall into repeatedly with making games by yourself. Why do I never hit this anymore? Probably because I, like, never actually learned where you're supposed to angle yourself or position yourself ever. Makes sense. Stream is going good. I imagine you can tell that already. Uh, maybe? I don't know what my viewership looks like at this point, but it's... It's probably... Let's be honest, dude. It's probably, like, schmackin'. I, uh, I, you know, I haven't dropped the commentary yet, so, so long as I got that, what am I doing? This is the wrong part of the, uh, the level that I think I'm in. The, uh, the biggest pitfall that you're going to come across time and time again while making games by yourself is a morale one. Like, many times, you will question why the fuck you're doing this, and, oh my god, this game idea is awful. Like, I, I don't even know why I'm seeing this to completion. Like, there is no fucking shot that has a chance in making it in, like, today's current market. Thank you for the follow, by the way. Um, morale. Morale is the biggest thing that'll stop you from completing games. Making games, not so difficult. Uh, completing games and, like, polishing them, very, very difficult. Finding the motivation to continue working on, like, uh, a project you have literally no fucking soul for and and wish to just abandon, it's gonna come up. You might think that, like, you've excluded- Wait, what the fuck? That was a- Wait, oh, oh, you got a channel point. I was like, God, you fucking scared me, dude. I thought I, I missed a subscriber. I was like, what, what kind of streamer am I? No resets. What are you, what are you gonna do? No reset run. Why do I always end up going too far left on that slope boost? It's uh, it's probably because I'm angling myself too far left. Who would have thought? But yeah, when I when I see a motherfucker using my emotes, I uh, I get I start sweating. I get scared. I'm like, what did I what did I miss? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong this time? It's always something. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this up though. Alright, let's reset, actually. Fuck. <laughs> I can't, dude. I can't. And look, I've still got energy. Let me let me take some time to look at the chat. While I've still got energy, popping off severely? 
Let's fucking go. While I've got the energy to be entertaining and uh, funny, air quotes on funny, um, I should probably keep going for a little bit longer. Oh fuck, sorry. Let me uh, let me read chat not on the main menu, so that the music doesn't double play. Huh. Okay. Yeah, no, Sullivan. Um, if you've if you've also made games, sick as fuck, dude. I have no issues with you uh, flexing if you wanna if you wanna post some self promotion in my chat. I don't care. Feel free. I uh, I respect any developers in this world. Developers, developers, developers. Check out Meetup or other social media apps to find some people in your area. Okay, I'm interested. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that was in reference to. <laughs> Probably for other people to uh, to to make games with, I would guess. Probably. I've said a lot of true and funny things about programming. Let's go, dude. True, true. This. <laughs> no, you're fine. I don't fucking like hijack chat all you want. Like, I, I, I would honestly appreciate like one person chatting than than nobody chatting. I don't care if it's just one guy, Germo one guy. But yeah, feel free. Go ahead. I don't care. It's not like I'm reading it anyways. <laughs> Uh, I can't fucking read shit while I'm in the middle of a run. This is like out- <sighs> The Hobbit is such a fucking like attention heavy, or maybe I should say attention hungry speedrun. Like it literally gives you no downtime throughout any of the run. The only time you get a slight reprieve is uh, is uh, a, a warm welcome? A welcome? What's it called? Warm welcome. That's the only time you get any, any uh, cool off. Other than that, it's just uh, exclusively hardcore gaming. Some of the hardest core gaming you'll see here on Twitch. Which, um, it kind of sucks, but I guess in the other way, it's like, look, during runs, you can't read chat at all. Like, at all at all. But thankfully, if you're me, it doesn't matter because you reset every two seconds, so I get plenty of opportunity to read chat. Like, I, I, the only time I'm actually impacted by, uh, by not being able to read chat is, like, I don't know, ten minutes out of, like, the, the two and a half hours I've been streaming this. The single run that I actually got to, uh, to green level. What if I started doing that? Isn't that a fun, quirky thing? I'm the streamer who doesn't know the names of any of the levels in the game he speedruns. True, true. He just calls them green level, uh, start level, dream level. Okay, look, I know some of the names. I'm, I'm, it's a joke. It's a bit. It's a bit, you dip. What do you think ever happened to the, uh, it's a meme, you dip guy? You think he ever, <laughs> you think he, he graduated middle school? <laughs> uh, you find yourself looking at chat when you do movement? No, dude. I'm gonna mess it up. It's not a sometimes for me. If I look at chat while I'm doing movement, I'm gonna mess it up. So, you know, we don't all have the luxury of being good at video games. Honestly, kind of toxic, Moose. Like, you come into my chat, you say some toxic shit like that? Like, come on, dude. Come on. You think you give one 52-person raid and you think that you can do anything. You're the ruler of the world. True, though. True, honestly. <laughs> Uh, so true. But, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's like, it's so hard because, like, I am the asshole in this situation. I want to be clear. By recommending that other people make games, I'm a complete fucking dickhead. Because it truly is absolutely soul-crushing if you ever get, like, a year into development on a project, like, Scope yourself small. I cannot stress enough that please make tiny games. If you think that what you're going to make is small, cut it in half. Cut that in half. Like, just make like a, a fucking thousand tiny little arcade games before you even think about doing a project that takes like a year or longer. Because like, no doubt, 
you're going to overestimate your abilities. You're going to see like, oh, I scoped a tiny little arcade game where you're a guy who jumps over barrels and kills Donkey Kong. Like, if you wanted to just try and like remake, uh, you know, fucking, what is it even called? Jumpman? Jumpman? If you wanted to remake Jumpman, fake gamer over here, we got a Donkey Kong kill screen coming up. I wait, no, it is just called Donkey Kong. What the fuck? It's not called Jumpman. That's, uh, that's like Mario's fake name, his, uh, his pseudonym, right? Start of a beef that will one day be a video by Summoning Salt. Let's go. Getting into the drama side of Twitch. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Let's make Tiny Game. Make Tiny Game for baby. You think that, uh... You think that you're making small games until you actually start trying to make games? Especially, and like, let me be clear, this is why like the number one advice you hear uh, when starting out is like, do not, do not think that you have the capabilities to make a fucking science-based dragon MMO as your first game. Um, I've been making games for like six years at this point, and I still have no idea how long it's going to take me to do something. Like, time estimates are impossible with games. There's a good reason why literally every single game company nowadays is either delaying their game multiple times or releasing complete unfinished dog shit. Sometimes even after... Sometimes... So, uh, I don't know where my camera is. S sometimes even after delaying it multiple times, sorry. I don't care about what I fucking wear. <laughs> I'm wearing a fucking Cyberpunk 2077 shirt that I got for free when I worked at GameStop. My, uh, my girlfriend needs to move in with me already so she can buy me clothes and, and have me look like a, like a cool, fashionable streamer. Otherwise, I literally, like, my strat is pull the, the first shirt and pair of pants I see that are clean in my clean clothes pile. And yes, it is a pile. You think I'm like, uh, you think I've... I've become enough of an adult that I that I actually fold and put up my clothes into their drawers. No thanks, buddy. They go straight from the washer and dryer into a fucking suitcase. And, and that's my clothes organization. They're all just chilling in a constantly open suitcase. That's what I call it. Like, look. I'm genuinely, like, one of the fucking cleanest streamers on this website, probably. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Moose. I, I had to throw you under the bus with that one. But, uh, I don't fucking know how clean your room is. It's probably better than mine. Let's be real. You, you, you're streaming to fucking 52. I'm streaming to zero. <laughs> I'm a zero viewer streamer. I'm never gonna let that one die. <laughs> your room is a disaster? Alright, let's go. And I, I did fuck up my movement like I thought I would by looking at chat. I needed to see the, uh, the instant response to that one. That one was important. That one meant something to me. My, uh, you know, I don't know. I, look. My girlfriend tells me I have depression. I probably do. Like, you know, if she says it, I'll believe her. She's not a psychiatrist, but I believe her. This is how relationships work. <laughs> um. But, I'm thankful enough to not be depressed to the point where I take good care of my room. Like, goddamn, dude. I I guess I, I think it's probably more so, and I don't mean to, like, obviously depression is awful, and I'm sorry if you have it, and if it debilitates you from being able to actually clean your room, no judgment. But, me personally, I think it's just that I get, like, well, I don't know. I'm just generally, like, a kind of clean freak. Uh, I don't think I'm OCD. I might be autistic. Just a little. Just a, just a fun amount of autistic. Not the to the point where it uh, affects my day-to-day -day living, fortunately. But I, I don't know. I think everyone's uh, just a quirky little little bit autistic. That's why they call it the spectrum, right? That's when... Uh, that's the diagnosis when, you know, people act like they're professionals and know everything about autism, but, like, no one really fucking knows what's going on there, right? Same with depression, honestly. Like, any mental illness, like, the fucking research into those fields is is kind of non-existent, so... I mean, there's some work being done, but I don't know. I, uh, anyways, I'm not gonna talk about this. That's sad. The <laughs> point is, um... Yeah, I don't know. You want an example of my 
fucking autism that, that sprung up recently. I, uh, my, my very kind and loving girlfriend gave me a, uh, a present for Christmas, a nice little Chrissy Prezi, and, uh, it was a sick present, honestly. Like, absolutely love it. It was the, um, it was the limited time thing that, uh, Square Enix did for Dragon Quest. Is it Square? Is it Squeenix? Dragon Quest is Squeenix, right? I'm not, like, losing an infinite amount of gamer cred right now. I fucking like the Dragon Quest games, too. Anyways, um, it was a limited run thing they did that's just a, a Japanese-only book of, like, all of the monsters and the history of the monsters in the Dragon Quest franchise. I absolutely love it. Um, but because I'm a little freak, literally the first thing my brain did when I opened up the packaging for it... I'm such an asshole, dude! I apologized afterwards, thankfully, but, like, I'm so stupid. For anybody who's, like, I don't know, as socially inept as I am, hopefully you'll relate. Hopefully? Hopefully I'm not the only one. The first thing I did after opening the packaging was go, wow, thank you, this is an awesome present. But also, I noticed that it was scuffed by the packaging a little bit. And I mentioned it, which is, like, don't do that. Like... I know it's not her fault, but I just shouldn't say it. Like, that's the thing in my brain doesn't, like, connect that she's going to take it personally and feel bad because it's her present. I'm just like, well, obviously she's going to understand that it's not her fault. So rationally, rationally, she shouldn't, she shouldn't be upset by this. But, uh, understandably, it, uh, it upset her, which is, yeah. My bad. I'm dumb, dude. That's the thing you gotta know, is that I'm dumb as hell. See ya, Sullivan. Thanks for hanging out. Glad you enjoyed it. Fuck, dude. To, to fuck it up on the stairs? On the stairs? That's that's a, a rough way to, to lose an overhill one. Dude, I was so, like, confident earlier and jamming out overhill after overhill. What happened to me? Probably the fact that I'm not focusing on my runs literally at all and just uh, just podcasting over them might have something to do with the decrease in performance, but also I always do that, so maybe it is nerves, dude. Maybe I'm nervous. <laughs> Probably a little bit, but I don't know. At this point, it's faded. If I am nervous, I don't feel it, which is, uh, you know, power. <laughs> not powerful. A not feeling is power. I've always been fucked up ever since watching that uh, that one episode of House growing up. House, the uh, the doctor show, the one where he is a uh, stern and often disrespectful doctor, but he gets things done, so nobody punishes his action. A actions. Sorry, got distracted by my cat meowing at me. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I don't know. Should I say hopefully you can or can't hear that? I think I lean more towards can't hear that, because even though it's cute, it's because he wants me to give him food. So I should probably be ending stream soon. My bad. I went a, a little bit long after the raidy waity. But, um, what was I talking about? Yeah, I've been fucked up ever since, uh, watching the episode of House where... I mean, it's like an incredibly rare, um... I don't even know what to call it. Disease? That doesn't sound right. Uh, birth defect sounds even worse, but like, um, some people are born with an inability to feel pain. Uh, that's gotta be up there. Well, n not really. It's, it's certainly inconvenient, I'll say. I'm not gonna go so far as to say that's up there as far as like, shit luck to be handed to you. I think it's insidious though. Like, yes, you aren't the the paper, skin, glass, bones guy who, man, I'm just making myself sad because that's a real person. There's a real child with a, a birth defect where literally their skin falls off every single day and all they know is pain. That's sad, dude. I made myself sad. It could be worse, uh, I guess. Uh, not feeling pain. As far as birth defects go, 
not the worst. I'll, I'll be so confident as to say, I think feeling nothing but pain um, is probably slightly worse than that. But I do think that it's insidious, because, like, I'm already, like, an incredibly paranoid person when it comes to my own health. Like, you know, I'll develop a cough, and immediately I'm like, that's COVID. What the fuck? Where'd I get COVID from? Um, I, I don't know. What's the term for it? There is a, like, genuine term for, like, people who are so medically anxious that they always feel they need the the attention of a doctor. I don't think I have it, like, that bad, but I certainly have it to a degree. Uh, not so much that I actually end up going to the doctor, because I don't, um, but I do just think I'm dying constantly. So <laughs> there is that. Uh, if I didn't have the ability to feel pain, and I never knew, like I, I never got an indication from my body that something was going wrong, I, I, I don't know, I think I would live in the hospital. Like I think I would genuinely just be a permanent patient. I'd be like, sign me in, I'm, I'm fucking here for life. I don't care what you say. I don't care if we don't have health care in America. Uh, they, they can't ever charge you on your debt if you never leave the hospital. Those are strats. They uh, they can't put you in debt if you never get the bill. It's uh, It seems like it would be probably worse than most people think. Like, I don't know. I hope that no one out there thinks that not feeling pain would be, like, cool and epic. Because I think that's just, like, I don't know, just naive. Um... He makes this? He doesn't make this. Neurotic? No. There's a term. Is it hypochondriac? I think it I think it might be hypochondriac, but I'm not confident enough in that answer. Uh I'm gonna take the 50-50. Uh scratch that, I'm gonna take the Gimme a... uh Chat, help me. I, I take the what is it even called? I I, I got stun locked by not remembering what is it? Viewer, viewer... is 50-50. I don't even remember what the third uh, lifeline is and who wants to be a millionaire. And then there's, like, ask chat. <laughs> ask. Ask the fucking randos. Call a friend? There's phone a friend. And then there's... Is... I don't know. It's just, like, they do a poll. Ask chat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end with ask chat. U.S. medical system, 100% no debt. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Just just never leave. Just stay in the hospital for life. But uh, alternatively, just never, ever get sick. <laughs> like, if you're afraid of medical debt, just, like, don't die. D like, come on, dude. It's not that fucking hard. Just, like, don't be born a diabetic. Come on. You can do better than that. Fucking diabetes? Really? You're going to make us pay, like, thousands of dollars every month? Shame on you for being born with a medical condition you have no control over. I had a friend who was diabetic in uh, elementary school. And, uh, yeah, I'll say it. It makes sense. <laughs> I mean, not to, like, be a fucking complete asshole to a friend of mine that I, you know, haven't talked to since we were eight years old. But, um, yeah, they were, uh... They weren't, like, complete food stamp level poverty, but they were not doing well, and it makes sense. Like, what do you even fucking do? What do you do if you have a kid that is diabetic? Anyway, sorry, I'm gonna stop talking about real shit for a while, and uh, go back to, what was I, what was I saying? House? Yeah. I do think that not feeling pain is bad. I, I'll say it. I'll say it. Like, the, the person in the show is fucking bullshit. House is bullshit. I believed everything that happened on House until this episode. This episode didn't do it for me. Bullshit episode. Oh, He really wants to eat. I'm going to do one more no reset run. And uh, if, I, if I end up resetting, it's just going to be the end of the stream. Yeah, buddy. I know. I know you're hungry. He's fucking bapping my arm. He, he really wants it. But, um, fuck it, dude. Okay. Okay. You know what? He does really want it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open the door for him, so at least he's not attacking my arms real quick. All 
All right. Last run, and then I feed my cat. And I, I make it another day as a, well, slightly toxic pet owner because I didn't feed him immediately when he wanted it. Although, honestly, that's more toxic. If you feed your cat literally every single time it asks for food, you will be a bad pet owner. You will have a fat cat. Although, I don't know, like, some cats just don't get fat. Like, I, there, there's always the instance of, like, uh, you know, I literally... My girlfriend told me the other day about, um... Was it her neighbors? Dude, honestly... <laughs> Let's be real here. Any uh, any other gamers really bad listeners? I think it was her neighbor's uh, cats that um, one of them is like very obese and the other one is incredibly skinny because uh, the fat one is just taking all of their food. Um, that sucks. But outside of that obvious example where, yeah, of course one of your cats is skinny. Uh, and you should probably try harder to separate their food portioning. Um, I feel like you also just, like, some cats will not eat, like, to, to overgorge themselves. Like, it, it feels like a cat trait. Your cat either has it or it doesn't. Um, like, for example, the, the, like, childhood cat that I grew up with, we always left, like, an uh, assload of food in her bowl. And she just, like, stopped eating when, when she was done, you know? She didn't overgorge herself and, uh, and get fat. I mean, she got a little fat. Like, I'm not going to say she was in peak physical condition. But she wasn't, like, uh, you know, she was still active. She was, uh, the probably, like, not very healthy for a cat, but also not, like, worth getting uh, super upset about level of overweight. Like, we didn't go out of our way to, to stop her from being a, a slightly chunky cat. Like, is she's gonna stop where, you know, her body no longer needs the food? Then who are we to step in the way of that? She's already doing a, a good enough job all on her own. I really am bad at listening, though. Like, my girlfriend and I were playing Minecraft last night. <sighs> I'm so toxic, dude. But see, like, people make such a big deal of, like, relationships in general. And, like, and obviously there's always going to be incels out there that are like, you can't make a single mistake with these women. Women are the devil and will try their hardest to destroy your life. Um, yeah, so obviously there's always going to be those people. Another consequence of being far too online. But, um... No, like, honestly, there's there's a lot of leeway in relationships. Not that you should take advantage of that. Like, I feel bad for being a bad listener. But <laughs> also, like, so long as you recognize it and, like, I should be better. It was funny in the moment. Like, most of the time, I, uh, I pay attention. But while we were playing Minecraft, I was trying to set up uh, a fucking... I was, it was, like, super claustrophobic because I did it, like, right underneath the spider farm. This is more Minecraft talk for people who wanted me to continue my Minecraft talk from, like, two streams ago. Um, yeah, we got a double spider farm. I'm trying to... I'm done. <laughs> I'm trying to set up... <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. Obviously, yeah, okay, I should have been higher up on the rope, whatever. Um, I'm trying to set up an auto-collection thing for their drops after they die. Um, with like a, cause they, it's not, a, it doesn't collect the spiders into one spot, they just die. You got hopper minecart under there. I don't know how to set up a hopper minecart auto collector with the fucking unloader. I have no idea what I'm doing, honestly. But, um, yeah, so I was trying to do that when uh, my girlfriend was telling me a story. And I just, like, every single time got too focused on what I was doing and just blanked out entirely. Um, and had to, had to... But look, I acknowledged it. If I was a complete dickhead, I would just pretend like I was listening. I, I owned up to the fact that I didn't catch a single word of that. Though I probably should have tried to pay attention the second time instead of, uh, it taking, like, five attempts for me to actually internalize what she was saying. Because I'm a dickhead. Anyways, uh, me canceling myself aside, I'm out of here.
Um, should I raid someone? Now it's where I see. Fucking 17 viewers, you guys are legends. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I appreciate you. Let me do my hardest to, uh, to find an appropriate person to raid on this website as it tries to autoplay most likely music on the front page, because that's generally what's on the front page of Twitch, because, yep, it's music! Everybody knows that Twitch is, uh... Everybody's favorite place for music, right? And, like, no one's afraid of DMCA takedowns or deleting your channel? We love music here on Twitch. Music? I'm a fan. Uh, let me, let me find someone to raid who... ...could actually use it, and, uh is not one of the only people I follow who have thousands of viewers. How do I search the Hobbit category? There we go. Oh, fuck. I'm the only person streaming the Hobbit category. Well, this is awkward. Let me do Mario 64. There's gotta be. Gotta be some gamers in Mario 64. Hopefully I pick someone who speaks English. <laughs> one of, like, my only big raids I ever did was to a channel that doesn't speak English. I felt so bad. I was like, oh, this raid was completely wasted because nobody knows what you're saying. Ugh, all right. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was gonna stream until my girlfriend was available anyways, so it's not really like I was uh, was taking up anybody's time but my own. But it was fun. Thank you for the raid, Moose. Seriously. I, uh, I massively appreciate it. And hopefully we can get some races going together. Let me, uh, let me get a Mario 64 gamer. Let me just scroll, scroll way down here. Let's send you to... Who's got the best name out of all of these guys? That's, that's the metric I pull. I want to pull someone with one, which is zero viewers. Uh, who, who, who do I respect most out of these people? Who am I not going to be embarrassed by? <laughs> If it turns out they're a complete asshole. This person is literally just restreaming Ludwig, so I'll probably not do that. Let's go with uh let's go with this channel. How do I how do I fucking raid people? How do I raid people on Twitch? I'm just gonna like <laughs> I'm just gonna like hey, you can say hi. You can say hi if you want. Uh I don't really know what I'm doing. There you go, say hi to them, and I'll try and, like, figure out how to do the raid the correct way in the meantime. Uh, I don't know how to do this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I have to type it in in this window. So you can tell I don't do this very often. <laughs> I found it, I found it. Yeah, say hi. Um, and, and, uh, tell them that they're a very cool gamer, because they probably are. There's plenty of very cool gamers at the bottom of Twitch that you, you wouldn't expect. So yeah, that's it. I'm done. Thanks for hanging out. Um, who knows when I'm going to stream next, but I appreciate you guys staying for as long as you did, and uh, I'll be back when I'm back. Bye. And then this is the awkward part where, like, I sent the raid, but I'm still live. Bye.